Three, two, two one. Monkey bars. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Think and Better podcast. <laughs> My name is Alex. I am Jesse. A.K.A. Think. And Butta. And this is episode, oh boy, 85. Yeah. Jesus 85. Uh, but also, more importantly, it is Butter's birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. this on his birthday. You're probably you're definitely not listening to this on his birthday, but we're no. recording this on his birthday. And I just want to say before we start, happy birthday, my friend. Thank you. Um, I love you. I love and, you too. Um, how old are you? I'm 23. 38. Oh, I'm 38. 20, 20 <laughs> going on 40. 52. 57. 52 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's some many more podcasts and many more years of friendship. Here, here, buddy. Here, here. Anyway, let's talk about pooping. Uh, so <laughs> you've had good. You've had good, you. You said an alarming thing to me the last time we talked. I don't know if we talked about this on the podcast, but you said it was normal to not poop for a month, and I no, still find yeah, that. No, but, I okay. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna double check my research because that um, seems crazy. Dude, and then you. Remember, and then you. You casually said after that, it's like, oh yeah, I've I've not pooped for a week before, and 100%. maybe I do. I I haven't pooped for like two weeks before. That's alarming to me. Have you ever? Um, I guess you don't really travel that much. You don't really travel that much, but no. One of the things that is very common when, like, uh, when you travel, like especially on a plane, like long yeah. distance, yeah, like you, I don't for whatever reason, like you can't sometimes like go to the bath like i was in i think i was in uh i know when i went to europe when i went, was, was in london i didn't poop for like four or five days wow after the flight. wow <laughs> so i don't know so what should i look up Ten? maybe maybe shit is just scared i'm gonna of say heights. i haven't pooped <laughs> In, in a long health. <laughs> is that is that how, bad? Okay, here you go. Health healthline.com. How long okay. can you go without pooping? Okay, yeah, yeah. This is exactly this what we want. This is what we want, baby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what does it say? Let me zoom in, let me zoom in here. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm fucking 85. Um how long can you go without pooping? A normal pooping frequency is anywhere from three times a day. <laughs> wow, that doesn't seem every, normal to, either. To, to, wait, look at this gap though. A okay. normal pooping frequency. This is what's weird. A normal pooping frequency is anywhere from three times a day to every other day. Okay. You know, so that's pretty. That's a pretty wide gap. Like you either be yeah. three times a fucking day, yeah. or every once in a while. Yeah. Um, most people notice about yeah, right, right, right. That seems so, about like what my schedule is. There's days where it just feels like I'm in the bathroom all day long. And then there's and then and then there's the easy going days, the intermittent skip days. So you have longer you days. Poop in several days. So I guess like this is saying that if you, it's like, it's weird because if you haven't been pooping for any days and you are oh my god <laughs> you are <laughs> experiencing like these symptoms like uh, I like this one, feeling as if you should poop but cannot <laughs> and nausea and then this one vomiting up stool which Ew, I don't even know is possible that sounds terrible that sounds horrible should um, cough up they, a turd. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I must be wrong. It must be. I must have thought like a week or two. Yeah. Um, but this, this article cites a horrific story of a young woman 
in the UK who didn't keep for eight weeks, and the, the stool caused her intestines to enlarge, so significantly they pressed on her organs and led to a heart attack. Uh, wow. I remember, uh, that reminds me of a story, like this horror story on Reddit, which I am not sure is true, because I think that it would probably have killed her if this happened, where uh, a woman was like trained that like, it's bad for girls to poop. So she, she like was at a party or something and she didn't. And like, she had this major problem and they had to like do major surgery and make cut, make her asshole really small. And it was like oh super painful. God. And I always oh. think about that. I, it's like, it's like, I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm just so happy to just poop often now. Like it just makes yeah. me so feel so much better. It's just like, I don't want a small asshole, dude. Anyways, I also want to go at the point that it's like, yeah, I thought it was crazy that, that not pooping for a month was normal. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think like, I mean, I couldn't think I was wrong. I think yeah. like, you definitely go probably two or three weeks without pooping. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would, it's just a long, that's like two months. That's yeah. Like, that's a long time. Like, okay, for me, if I didn't poop in a week, I would be concerned, but well, not thinking about a doctor. It's all about your, like, say you poop, like, <laughs> once every two weeks, and sure. you're fine. You know, that's your schedule. You do that yeah. every... Man, and, like, that seems That's okay. Crazy. That's how your body works. Yeah, you know, and that's what this article is saying too. It's kind of about your like your the way that your but your poop cycle. You if know? you have a poop cycle, poop cycle of cycle like out of whack, like you're yeah. pooping eight times a day, and you're like, I yeah. don't know how to do this. Yeah, you feel like sick. You know, that's probably a problem. Pooping too much is also an issue. You know. Yeah, yeah. I there was just a story. Oh, this is a great actually shout out of a of a comic I just read that I read a long time ago, but I really love. It's a Chester Brown comic called Ed the Happy Clown. Have you ever heard of this? No. Yeah. It's a comic. Um, it was kind of an improvised surrealist comic, but there's a there's this plot line in this story that is a central plot line that is about a guy who can't stop shitting. And it turns into the, the reason he can't stop shitting is that there's an alternative dimension that is the same as ours, but it's very small, <laughs> but there's no plumbing system. And the way that they solve their plumbing problem is that they found this portal to our dimension, which is this man's asshole. And they just shove all of their waste from their universe into this, into this art dimension. Does that make wow, sense? That's pretty fucking funny. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's awesome. I highly recommend reading Ed the Happy <laughs> Clown. <laughs> that's hilarious. But yeah, I mean, so... Yeah, I mean, I was going to go into a horrific pooping story, but I'm kind of second-guessing myself. I think About... you, you know my horrific pooping story because it happened... When you got prodded? Are you talking about that story? Like um, when you... Well, that's, that's the story that proceeded like, after this specific story. Yeah. All right, I'll just tell it. I don't, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I want to know. I'm hesitant because I don't know if I've ever told this on the podcast before. I don't want to. Oh, gotcha. Well. Okay. We, well, have if you... like, we have like, think about this. We have like a hundred hours of this podcast. Wow, that's true. I don't even yeah. know what I fucking said. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, it's going to be um, wild. So like we... the story, I, I apologize. But yeah, we can cut uh, it if need be. Um, so I this is what Avengers Endgame was coming out. So this was okay. two <gasps> years ago. It's crazy this. to think about, right? Two years ago that movie came out. Yeah. Um and Oh yeah, so it we, is. So we went and saw that movie opening night, which was a super fun experience. Yeah. If you remember, I was super sick, like during that <laughs> when that movie came out. Oh That's yeah. That's why we never reviewed that movie. We never, we yeah. never reviewed the biggest movie of all time. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that's because I was having this severe constipation. You know, I was doing anything. I was selling dispositories up my butt. Yeah. And, 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 like what, juice, like pure it was fiber, pure fiber. Nothing was working. And uh, I was in a lot of pain. And, like, yeah. we had tickets to see this movie. I was like, we can't. I'm going. So we went. And if you remember, the first time I saw it, I had to 
I had I had so many bathrooms. I got up and I left during Black Widow's death scene. Yeah, I remember I that. Missed, I missed that. One of my favorite things ever is I missed that whole scene. And I came <laughs> back and I sat down and I, was, and I whispered. And I was like, did I miss anything? And you had like wide eyes and you were like, a lot. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> um, so, uh, but, okay, so that was fine. So, yeah. I wanted to see that scene, so I went by myself to see the movie, like, I think, like, the next week or whatever. Yeah. Two weeks later. And I went by myself during the day, and I was sitting, there's no one in the theater, and I was sitting up <laughs> watching the movie, and I, you know, I had this instance where, you know, like, when you think you're going to fart, you know, uh-huh. like, I got to uh-huh. fart. And then you fart and just war comes out. And so I just had such a massive wet fart in this movie theater. And <laughs> like, like by myself, and I was like, I just shit my fucking pants. Like watching <laughs> Avengers Endgame by myself. And so I like walked into the bathroom and like went to the stall and was like, like I was like, hopefully I was like, it's not that much, so I can maybe salvage these pants or, or you know, these this underwear. No, so I basically <laughs> I had the I I was like, dude, I couldn't even put these back on. So I basically yeah. had to like throw away my underwear. Wow. In the bathroom when I watched the rest of the movie, Commando. <laughs> That's hysterical. I do kind of remember. <laughs> was that the same time? Oh man, this is going to be kind of a blue ball part of the story. But I remember that there was, weren't there two guys peeing and they said something incredible while you were like yeah, dealing so with I, your I shit? Fucking can't remember what he said. It was I one remember of those things that was so crazy. Yeah. That I can't remember like what he said. Like, I also, the really tragic thing about that is that when you told me, it was so funny and ridiculous that I was like, I'll yeah. never forget that ever. I'll yeah. always remember that. I and know. We, we neither of us remember. It was it's devastating. Well, devastating. I, I could even repeat another thing that I overheard somewhere yeah. that we said to each other. <laughs> like, <it was> insane. <laughs> I didn't say that because it was so absurd. It was so, quite inappropriate. Quite inappropriate. <laughs> I like to think that we have no rules on this podcast, but in this case, I will not say what, what I overheard a yeah a white person say. That's what yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah, we'll let you we'll let you put the pieces yeah. together with we'll that information. Like, um, I wanted to pivot and okay. talk about some movie news. Oh My, yeah, what's up? But dude, Godzilla versus Kong. <laughs> bro, that trailer is absurd. Yeah, it is absurd. I'm into uh, it. Yeah. I'm super into it. Yeah, man. Uh, I genuinely am very excited about it. You know, yeah. I know we reviewed we reviewed Godzilla King of the Monsters. The yeah, 2014 Godzilla movie. Which I think is genuinely good. The 2014. Yeah. Uh, movie, really. It's like it's like good with some pretty serious caveats to that good. You know what I mean? Like it's like <laughs> yeah. it's like it's like yeah. no one goes in expecting to empathize with the the people. Yeah. But yeah. if we just if we if you just focus on the monster clips, if it was just like a monster clip yeah. animated short film, yeah. that movie would be fucking yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And also, like what I liked about the first movie was like. The Gareth Evans directed that, who went on to make Rogue One. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, he did. Wait, wait. Had... Rogue One. Rogue One. I thought Rogue One was before the Godzilla. No, no, no. no. I'm talking about the 2014 Godzilla, the one before that. Oh, the one, I got gotcha. you. With, uh, I got gotcha. you. Aaron, Aaron Taylor Johnson in it. And Brian gotcha. Cranston. Brian Cranston's in it for a second. Oh, I do. I, I saw that movie. That yeah. was very unmemorable. Uh, yeah, very unmemorable. That one, I, that one I'm talking about. That one I think is like kind of enjoyable. Yeah, I like that really one. Cool. I like that one too, really. Really cool about that movie is the scale. Like, he was uh-huh. like able to like, because one of the things yeah. that I liked about it was like, it was told from this like army guy's perspective, like the main guy. But what I liked about that was, like, he was in it. Like, he was on, mm-hmm. he was, like, in the cities. Like, so you got all these amazing shots. Like, 
like perspective shots. Of, like, yeah, that's Godzilla a really good point. That's a really, really good really, point. Really cool. But King of the Monsters kind of took more of a, uh, it was more not so much like grounded in reality. It was kind of like, yeah, I fantastical. still had like the Monster stuff and King of the Monsters was fucking fun as shit. It was yeah. really fun. All yeah. the fucking Monster sequences and the fights were so fun. The issue was the fucking humans, man. Yeah. I don't yeah. care. I don't care. I do not yeah. care. You know, you, and you the know, first thing I, I tested you about this trailer was <laughs> listen, less human, more lucky and lizard. I live, I'm you know? lay it on me. Yeah, seriously. I you know, as you're saying, as you were talking about this, and as I watched the King Kong, uh no, uh the Godzilla versus Kong trailer, I, I really did remember I didn't have bad experiences with any of the Godzilla movies. No, no, you know? no, no, and, no, maybe, no. and maybe it's because you go in with kind of a Godzilla expectation because you know exactly what you're going to get. Yeah, right. right. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. that's a kind of a nice thing about Godzilla. Yeah. It's really hard to be disappointed. It's like, oh, dude, they just like, they just like, they showed Godzilla and he was really big, but like that human, he was kind yeah. of like two dimensional, man. Kind of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I always, always like roll my eyes and like, like when I saw like credits, especially or, like review, like the, the latest one, and they were like, yeah. <laughs> they were like, they were like, dude, like, w- like where are the characters, man? Like, what are you, like, the problem with the newer one to me was just too much of the humans. Like, it was yeah. just like, bro, like, like you're wasting time. Like, show me the fucking, show me more of Godzilla, you know? Yeah. And like, I... tri- they tried. Yeah. I feel <laughs> like I feel like, like <laughs> I feel like one of the things what what I'm kind of hoping for um with the Kong versus Godzilla trailer which is kind of which is cool is that there's like a really clear story and rivalry between Kong and Godzilla obviously right. but then they're also shipping that there's like this other storyline about like a secret history which I'm not mm-hmm. saying is like interesting but if they have an actual story like that then the characters themselves don't have to be that interesting if yeah, there's like right. a story happening that's yeah. like somewhat engaging it's like okay did, I'll, I'll ride this train just to you, see more monsters did you see Kong Skull Island no did I didn't that? so I saw that movie and I think that is the worst of the of the the recent Lost movies. I remember um, you didn't. You said you did, did not, not like that like at it. all. And, but I will admire it for like Kong is awesome. Like the mm-hmm. the new Kong. I mean, all the Lost shit they're get right. They get right. The weird thing about Kong Island that was a really weird. Like I kind of admire like the the attempt at what Kong Island did. Like maybe we'll. I mean, maybe before Kongsville Island we'll just review like Godzilla the first Godzilla movie and Kong. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it would be kind of cool. Fun. It would be kind of cool to do like a, a marathon view. So we watch yeah. all these movies leading up to it yeah, and man. we just kind of even we revisit. Shit, man. I like it because it's a franchise that like is like you know, giant like the, the the idea is giant washers punching each other, you know, like it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's pretty that, good. You know, and, uh, and I so, mean, monster yeah. movies are like my favorite genre ever. Yeah. So and great. the and, awesome. and Godzilla is like the monster movie Maybe granddaddy of all granddaddy monster movies. So like I'm, yeah. uh, you know, and and you're right. The thing that's cool about this modern era is just how like the CGI now is so crazy good. Like dude, I was looking, that monkey, so cool. He looks like a giant fucking monkey, yeah, dude. Looks, it's really sick. Cool. He well, really does. This is really really cool, man. You yeah. Just, like, now, yeah, you're right. This day and age, you just do like crazy shit. And even even though the actors, even it, this is also like an uh, a compliment to how good the CGI looks because the actors don't do a good job acting to the CGI, but I still believe that there's a giant monster yeah, right, next to them. Yeah, right, I still yeah. believe that because it right. looks so realistic. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I've only seen trailer. I haven't seen movies. I know what I'm talking about. I've seen two of the movies. They they do yeah, look you, like that. The only one you haven't seen is Kong Kong Skull mm. Island. Yeah, and like Kong Skull Island, I remember being so excited because the the trailer is one of the most badass trailers I think I've ever seen in my life. Because I, I can't. I, I kind of remember it. I think they played it a lot. What the so what? It's, it was a weird movie because the the director like tried to make 
he was a country to make like a B movie, like kind of just mm. like B, like B movie. That's interesting. It's like this modern, you know, he's trying to make like a like an old school washer movie. Sure, yeah. But with that, like you, you got these characters that were truly like life stereotype. Oh and yeah, yeah, sure, really sure. boring. Mm-hmm. And it was such a missed opportunity because you had like fucking Samuel L. Jackson, John yeah. C. Riley, Tom Hiddleston, Brie Larson. Wow. Like they had wow. a fucking badass cast, and you did nothing with any of these actors. I mean, yeah, like, I love Brie Larson. I think she's an amazing actress, dude. Her character in that movie, I shit you not, is like the girl that takes pictures. Like she's wow. like, not even a character. Like wow. she doesn't even do anything. And they and don't so, kill him off or anything cool like that. No, and then like oh. the, the the character, like the John C. Riley's character, is the only one that they that had like some arc to it. But like the like like they they're all cardboard stereotypes. You know, he's yeah. trying to make a a B movie. You yeah. know, and some people really liked it. You know, like their yeah. reviews of that movie, I think, are pretty okay. Are um, they like better than the other like Godzilla? I feel franchise? like they're they're better than King of Monsters for sure. Mm, mm. Yeah, um, people really shat on that movie. They really dislike that movie a lot. Yeah, <laughs> like I like I understand like if you like say if you like grew up watching those B horror movies and like like that he was clearly a watching like kind of these bad kind of uh washer movies from like the 70s because the movie also is really cool because it's set in the 70s and it kind yeah. of has this like apocalypse now kind of vibe to it um yeah. and kong was awesome he looked yeah. great and also a disappointing thing about kong is like too is like you know the fight at the end dude i remember seeing the first Godzilla movie with one of my buddies one of my favorite theater experiences ever because the first Godzilla movie has this bad ass finale scene where mm-hmm. when he's fighting Mothra and when he unleashes the, his fire breathing shit on Mothra yeah. for the first time, dude, I remember like fucking like cheering in the theater. Like, I was like, yeah. this is the coolest <laughs> shit. <laughs> so we see the and same with King of Monsters had an awesome, you know, King Gudra. That was so sick. That awesome was sick. Fight. Yeah. Awesome that was fight. Sick. He uses like the EMP and just fucking like just it's awesome. It's so cool. So you're waiting for that moment, right? Like if the movie's bad, you're like, well, at least the monster fight should be cool. Yeah. The Kong fight is kind of boring. It's oh, not man. really that cool. And also like they they took like the uh, the idea of, like, Skull Island, you know, so there's a bunch of different creatures on this island, and Kong is the, the king of Skull Island, yeah. you know? And so, um, some of the creatures look cool, but, like, I I, I had such a hard time, like, remembering certain things from that movie. Uh-huh, and yeah. so, it was kind of a bummer, but this Godzilla vs. Kong, I'm pretty excited about it, because, for yeah. one, they look like they're not taking it seriously. With the fucking like with the rap song playing and fucking like <laughs> like like there's a shot dude like there's a shot in that trailer that got me so pumped when Kong literally is like like they're zooming in the Kong's face and it's just like it's just like what the fuck and yeah he starts yeah his chest. It's like, yeah dude, yeah that's what I want to see man yeah and I think yeah. they also there's a shot where like Kong gets like a sword like dude oh that's sick oh that's there's so a shot, sick that shot where like like Godzilla, like fire breathing and jumps like like a yeah. way. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's really and sick. Like the scene where he put, like just punches him straight up. Yeah, it's it's cool, man. Uh, yeah, I also I... have hope because the guy who direct is directing Godzilla vs. Kong. Is who is Adam he? Weingard. Okay. So I like a lot of his movies. He made this amazing home amazing movie called um, You're Next, which is like fucking badass. Yeah. Yeah, he made the guest. Which I oh, so love this guy, this guy is a real director, actually. He's a real He's... director. He also made Blair Witch, the reboot of, of Blair Witch. That was okay. He he's interesting, and yeah. he's kind of 
like, he, he seems like a really good fit. Because a lot of his movies, especially Your Next, have this great, like, tongue-in-cheek kind of tone to them. Especially, and, um, and The Guest. And yeah. so, he actually kind of reminded me of Michael Doherty, who directed the, the King of Washers, and they, like, Trick or Treat, and, uh, Krampus. He's kind of oh, a similar director. Yeah, 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 actually. yeah. That, that is actually, it's an, that's an interesting vibe. Yeah. Um, so, I think it's kind that, of interesting. It's, so I like him more than I like Michael Garrity. So I'm kind of like interested to see what he does. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to see what he does too. It is kind of, uh, you know, the Godzilla franchise is kind of an interesting pickle for someone to do, to work with, especially, specifically in our modern context, I feel. Uh-huh. In my opinion, I think the best way to, to do, if I were to direct a Godzilla film, I would do it, like you're saying, tongue-in-cheek slightly. Yeah. Um, but I would also do it with very minimal dialogue and mostly do it like as a right. visual thing. But well, both that of... so cool about King of Losses, right? Is there was, like, yeah. there were, like, a lot of scenes I like that. There were, like, like that, I remember when King that scene where King Gudra like emerges like out of the yeah, ice. dude. Like, yeah, that was so tough. Like, but when they're cutting to the humans, I'm like, bro, don't even do you that. see. Like, and that's the that was the problem with yeah. it, right? Because like we, it seems like we have an un, we're, we're so uncomfortable with silence or not having dialogue yeah. or explaining or. Maybe it's not the audience that aren't comfortable with that, but the directors are so concerned that people like won't understand what's happening yeah, or something right. like that. And that there's always these cut-ins with a lot of movies like this to like re-explain or reconfirm that this is what's happening. This is what we're thinking about. <laughs> right. This is how we should yeah. feel. And that was what was so distracting about King of Monsters. Cause you're right. It's just like, dude, just don't cut here. Just don't yeah. cut. Just and leave it. I guess it would be really different if the humans were like likable and like yeah. funny but, but, it's, hard, you know? but like but like it's like the other thing that you can work with is like yeah you can make a movie that is like human centric like uh fuck what was that one you know the the is it jj abrams who made that one monster like the found footage monster movie oh my god um no uh, he didn't make it, but he put cloverfield Cloverfield, yes, I'm thinking of Cloverfield. Which that's, Cloverfield that, that, that's great, ass, but really. Cloverfield is like the monster, but from character perspective. Yeah, but right. we want Godzilla yeah. to be more like we have some human vessels yeah. to fill in the yeah. time, but right. it's more like all about monsters. So right. I feel like I feel like it's not necessarily the correct thing to do to create really deep characters with Godzilla. It's I would weird, love that. They're trying to like they're trying to like like make a movie that like like. They want the humans, they want the audience to, like, attach themselves to, like, a human character, but, like, that's not what we're here for. Like, we want to sure. see, like, that's why, like, the first Godzilla, like, kind of, like, worked the best to me, because the main character had a family, he had a kid, and he yeah. had a wife, so you can actually kind of connect to that, because he's yeah. trying to find his wife and his kid throughout the whole movie, Yeah, and Elizabeth Olsen is, like, with his with her child is trying to get away from the monster. Like, you know, it's not the deepest thing in the world, but I'm more emotionally attached to that rather than a bunch of dudes that are in a safe bubble. I agree. You know, yeah, that are I agree. like tracking Godzilla. Like, bro, like what? Like I don't care about the like the organization that's hunting this thing yeah. down, you know. And, and you know, it's also kind of distracting because with these movies, um, they structure it in a kind of conventional format where you people I think subconsciously or consciously recognize that you know, I know I should be sympathizing and empathizing with this character because mm-hmm. of these story beats and stuff, but I don't because they're shallow <laughs> and I hate yeah, them. Right, yeah. And that can yeah. be like a really kind of distressing experience yeah. when you have this character. It's like, I know I should feel something for this person, but I really just don't at all. Yeah, right. <laughs> you ever in Taylor Walker's one? <laughs> Me and my buddy always say this to each other. What do you guys they like see Godzilla or something, and he's like, "Oh my god!" And then the guy just goes, "Zilla." That was a great moment. It was like, hilarious, super funny. I wish there was more stupid shit like that. I know, that I was know, in there. I know, just, just make like that the whole you know, movie. Cause, is stupid cause, shit, you know, because you know what's kind of fucked up about that scene too is that like it doesn't that like okay, I think that's like the best scene in the movie, but based on the context that they choose to play off 
all the other characters, it like doesn't work with the context that they're choosing. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Yeah. So it's like it's like Weird. it's like this doesn't work, but I wish it was all like this. Yeah. So it kind of sucks. So you're getting like the wrong like feedback saying so, that this is a bad moment, but it's not. That's a good moment. Make it all like that. I don't know, like Kong versus Godzilla. Like I don't. I don't get enough of like the healing stuff to like know what the code of the healing stuff is gonna be in the yeah. new one. I do think the child angle is a little more interesting where Kong is like has this like connection with the child. Yeah. But like, okay, I have a little bit of I'm also, uh, it also looks exciting that, because but... the child doesn't look like she talks. I think that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> she'll do the talk. That's cool, you know, like this yeah. child kind of Kong has this, you know. Uh, attachment to this child, like I like that. Um, but I was reading some theories. Do you think so? Yeah, one of the things that people have been talking about is that they're making Godzilla out to be the villain almost in mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. And I've been reading some speculation that that's not really Godzilla, but that's oh. not the Godzilla. Oh, shit, that would be so, dope. which is a, <laughs> which is totally possible, totally yeah. possible. Um, I don't think that's insane at all. Yeah. Um, because, you know, in the first two, you know, they, they build Godzilla as, you know, he's a hero. He, he's, you know, he's somebody, well, not a hero, but he's somebody that... He's like the projector of Japan, you know, yeah, he's like right. the ancient protector. Yeah. And so, but this movie, like, he's just fucking shit up. And they yeah. bring Kong to help, you know, fight him, you know, because they can't, you know... Which is an awesome angle. Awesome angle. Uh, but it's just that, weird that now, so on, what is making Godzilla go fucking berserk and crazy though? You know? I would love, to, I would, I don't really know like the lore of Godzilla um, super deeply. I would love I don't know to Mecha know. Godzilla. Yeah, I don't know that either. And I, I also don't buy, know. I what we should do. We should both pick him. Oh, for the criteria. The fucking criteria, the Godzilla criteria collection. That would be so, them all. That would be so sick. I would I love, love to see those. I, mean, I, I would love too. I think they'd be awesome. I think yeah. it would be so awesome. I think so. There is, there is a, there's like a OG Kong versus Godzilla, right? Oh yeah. I think in the let's see. Who I won? Say, what's your guess? What what, what year do you think? Oh Godzilla man, versus the original Godzilla versus Kong. Man, that's actually a tough question because I'm not really sure when the Godzilla. I want to say that it's like, like is that this is it starting in the 50s or was it a 60s thing? Was it start even before well, that? The like first, in the 40s? the first Godzilla. Movie well, was... okay, it happened. It happened after World War II because Godzilla is like the bomb, right? That's like Dude, the bomb. There are so many that. Godzilla movies. This is hilarious. I think so. I think there's Kong... a, there's a movie called Godzilla versus Space Godzilla. That's sick. I think I think that Kong, the original Kong versus Godzilla, is 1955. 1955. Let's see how wrong. Wow, you're really close. Right. How uh, long? 1952. Or oh, 62, sick. 62. Uh, 62. You're still okay. pretty close. Yeah. Um, yeah, so 1962 is when this came out. Wow, that's cool. Um, Who won? Oh, wow, the, skill, the skills are, are something. <laughs> yeah, that they look like 1962. Yeah, cuts I, mean, they're just, they're, I love this shit, man. I need to buy the criterion because it's they're fucking they're guys in suits. I know. Each other. I know. It's fucking no. the best, you know? <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so i wonder who won in that movie who won yeah you know? that's yeah that was that's my was question there a yeah. winner? i hope so i hope that i i don't know maybe it's just a competitive spirit dude i don't want i want there to be a winner you know i want yeah, there to I be I a clear too. fucking kong one or godzilla one you know like, I don't, because you know what's going to happen. Like, they're going to, like, it's going to be Batman and Superman. Like, oh. one of them's going to win, and then they're going to team up, and then they're going to fight against, you know, fucking. Yeah. You know. I actually see in here, in this quick thing that I just searched, who won, Kong or Godzilla? And it says that, according to this Wikipedia article, it says oh. that Toho confirmed that King Kong was the winner, which surprises me. I haven't seen the movie. 
So yeah. I mean, is it obvious that he's the winner? I don't know yeah. how. <laughs> well, yeah. In the in the sixty two in the sixty two sixty three version, it says the ending of the film makes it seem ambiguous, but Toho Ooh. later confirmed in and in like the plot synopsis that King Kong was the winner. Oh, which is shit. which is interesting. So is it? Uh. It's Godzilla's turn. <laughs> yeah. Is Godzilla going to take the cake? Who are you rooting for? Well, that's the question. I mean, right now, right now, I'm always, I, I tend to always lean towards uh, Godzilla just because, like, yeah. I think he, I always, as a kid, I always leaned that way because I thought he looked cooler. But, yeah. like, the thing I'm about King guy. Kong, the I'm thing about King guy. Kong, that the reason why people sympathize for it is because it's more of a human story, especially with, like, the King Kong thing. 100%. They, did a, they yeah. did a better job of making it a human story, which yeah, is why right. I think they want, it's he's supposed to be the victor. So, yeah, right. canonically, I think it makes sense for Kong to win. But it's also kind of weirdly U.S. versus Japan, isn't it? Good point. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> That's weird that Toho, if it's U.S. Oh, versus Japan. No, I think Toho... I wonder. I think of that movie, Godzilla, the original one was maybe. You know, I, I would like to look at the history of like that movie because yeah, like, I wonder how that worked. Man, wait, so like, King but... Kong is a universal property. You know? Wow, that's hilarious. Do they literally? Is that how fucking? egotistical america is that they're just like dude we're making our monster win in the versus movie like america has well, to yeah win. i don't know if this was america's like i don't was that in the, was that a japanese movie like yeah or right out of the america movie yeah. i feel like it was i feel like it had to be a combined franchise it right? has king, be, kong, right? king kong was yeah, like a, put kong in a fucking you know, Godzilla movie, i'm i'm Godzilla sure i'm it. sure i'm sure most movie nerds know this and For i sure. feel like i feel like i should know this so i feel a little bit ashamed not knowing it honestly oh but, dude, there's like i mean there's a reason why they put all the fucking Godzilla movies on criteria like mm -hmm. the like special edition because there are major fans of those movies <laughs> you know they're 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 psychos die hard. There that are yeah. Godzilla fucking diehards, you know? So, so here's the thing about, like, Japanese style. Uh, it tends to be a lot of Japanese style stuff because I'm also thinking about manga. And this is kind of a cool side effect about the method of just throwing a bunch of shit out there regardless of quality is that if you, uh -huh. throw, if you throw enough movies out there, like there's so many Godzilla movies of varying qualities and stuff, but then you'll take it and you think about like the overarching universe and the laws of it. And it kind of changes it into this cool semi-realistic thing because there's just so much lore to base off yeah. of everything. You know what I mean? And I yeah. think that that's, I think that yeah, that's kind of yeah, totally. about a franchise like um, Godzilla. Sorry. When I was I look up how many Godzilla movies are there are. <laughs> many. And like I am stunned. There are thirty six of them. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna hold on, I'm gonna start. Oh wow. Okay, so you have the Coho films, which is like the original fifteen or no. Yeah. What the no. Oh my god, no, the original thirty two or the Coho films. The last one came out in two thousand eighteen. What the fuck? Yeah. These the they, Netflix. They, I don't think Japanese they ever Netflix? I don't think they ever stopped making Godzilla films. All right. I don't think they ever have. So the first one was Godzilla two hundred fifty four. Godzilla Rage of Guns. Wait a minute. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, wait, okay. And then we have King Kong versus Godzilla was the third one in nineteen sixty two. That was the um, third one? That's yeah. interesting. I and didn't then, think that. The fourth one was Lothra, uh, which is wow. which was the villain of the first movie. Mm -hmm. the American one. And then Ghidra was the third one. Cool. Another and then cool the one. The sixth one was the invasion of Astro Monster. <laughs> nice. Dude. And then Ibra, Horror of the Deep. Son of Godzilla, destroy all monsters, all monsters attack, Godzilla versus Hydra, Godzilla versus Gigan. Wait, 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 Hydra? Like, like, Hydra, Ghidra, yeah. not, Hydra, not Ghidra. I think, I think Hydra, yeah, H-E-D-O-R-A. I had no idea there was a Hydra and a Ghidra. That's hysterical. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, what well, the fuck does Hedra look like? Uh, Hedra looks like... What the fuck? I don't know how to describe that. Here, I'll look up a picture. He looks like... He kind of looks like... What the fuck? Dude, the posters are like... The greatest I just right. got leaves when I looked it up. I just have pictures of leaves. <laughs> oh, it's Hedora. Oh. Hedora. Oh, he's like a he's like a slime trash monster. He's kind of yeah. cool. <laughs> Hedra or he Godzilla or Hedrodra or the grooviest kaiju is, flick these ever. Are, we're in the seventies now. Then there's Godzilla versus Deegan. I don't know what Deegan is. <laughs> I thought you said Deegan Dog, at first. Megalodon. Yeah, Megalodon. Oh, a shark. Or cool. no, Meg, no, sorry, Megalodon. Not Megalodon. Megalodon. Okay. Megalodon. <laughs> Dude, I gotta watch all these movies. Man. Yeah, these sound sick, That's dude. These sound sweet. And then, this is... Yeah, and then this one, Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla. I know yeah. that that is a fan favorite. So, yeah. <laughs> Return of Godzilla. Godzilla. What the fuck, man? Man, dude, that would be Godzilla so fun. Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla 2. See, they're going to sequel. <laughs> yeah, I bet, that one, I bet that one's sick. I bet it's dope. Godzilla 2000. I'm out in 2000. I'm curious about oh, the Godzilla man. movies that like came out right before this modern Godzilla movie. Yeah, so I remember. I, I remember, know Sid Godzilla. Yeah, that's the one that he's that like kind of a, he, he's yeah. kind of like a zombie in that one, right? Apparently, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, oh well, the worst thing, the worst Godzilla movie I've ever seen in my life is the first American one. You know, mm. have you seen that one before? What's it called? It's just called Godzilla. And it came out I, in the nineties. I haven't seen it, but I've heard and it's that. And it's directed by Roland Emmerich, who's like known for making, you know, you know, like Independence Day, like two thousand twelve, uh-huh. like all those like shitty disaster movies like yeah. uh, the day after tomorrow and like yeah. who's that director? He made a Godzilla movie and it is so bad. Like he's he's like a lizard. Like he's like he they they make it out that he's a giant lizard. Like they they're not like like and I think the way that they described it is that like this lizard like was like a radioactive lizard. And he like became, they made like, he, they made Godzilla a teenage mutant ninja turtle? That's not of, right. Yeah. That's not right at all. Yeah. Um, well, in, in, incorrect decision. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are their own franchise. Yeah, they yeah. They, they ain't kaiju. What if They're they did Godzilla stuff, versus the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? I'd be, I'd watch that. Movie oh my god, sure. I'd watch that. So <laughs> kidding me? Okay, I wouldn't watch it if it was like the creepy CGI Ninja Turtle movies. I'm a big TMNT fan. I'll have you know. I never see. I never. I never got. I never got into TMNT, which is okay. kind of weird because the comics it seems right up my alley. The comics are cool. I've read some of the comics, and all of them are really cool. They're they're like sort of adult and kind of intense. Yeah, I know. I've heard that. Yeah. And then they then there's the 2003 version of the cartoon, which I watched obsessively as a kid, and I'm actually rewatching it now, and it's really sick. I actually (laughs) I still really like it. And then I I'm not really interested in anything else because all of it just kind of seems like shit. Did you ever see those like guys? I did. Suits. I did. Oh, you mean the live action one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the I, had a, I had a VHS the movie. Of the, of the only thing I know about that movie is Vanilla Ice was. <laughs> was I don't think... he, he wrote a song for the second one. Oh, damn. And it was called Go Ninja Go or something. <laughs> Go Ninja, Go Ninja. I've heard I've heard that before. I had one of them, but I don't think it was that. I remember not liking it. I remember this is so funny. I was I remember I was so dedicated as a TMNT fan that I love the 2003 series and I would watch this movie and I would and I would be like, I should like this because it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but I just yeah. don't like this as much. And I don't understand why. And now I understand why. It's because Did you it's see the Bay one? No, I have not seen that. That looks yeah. really horrific. Yeah. It looks truly horrific. Yeah, I never, never saw that. <laughs> I would like to do a not like review that on the podcast and do a funny review of I it. I don't know if I ever do like a movie, They're pretty bad. I I hate them. 
Lux yeah. so Lux. I haven't I haven't watched them. I've I've really I haven't watched them trying to dissect them. I've only watched them like in parts, like when someone yeah, else right. is watching them, yeah, right. or I've just yeah. dismissed them fully. Uh-huh. I think um, I I like to watch them sometimes because I just try to wrap my head up. I just like to I like to realize that Americans are stupid. Mm-hmm. And this is people like this. You know, I just like to yeah. recognize that people will watch like boobies, explosions. Um that's what people want, you know. Yeah, and, uh, it's good to, <laughs> to get knowledge <laughs> that the reason we're not getting cool two hundred million dollar movies is no fucking season because yeah. no movies in it. Well, I That's think the Blade, other the fact that Blade Runner twenty forty nine bombed is the biggest dis- sad sadness of all time. Yeah, know? it is. It is incredibly depressing. Um, I'm glad that got, I'm glad that dark side of the fucking moon. Way more money than that, or whatever it was fucking called. I really appreciate the perspective that I really got from Ralph the Music Movie Maker, realizing that the reason those movies exist is because of the profits that's made in China and stuff. And yeah. it's like yeah. I have a little bit more sympathy for Chinese people, or you know, people who don't speak English enjoying those right. things. Yeah, it's, sure. it's yeah. similar to like Americans enjoying anime. They because... still make a lot of money in fucking America. Without... And and if you don't speak the fucking language, if you don't speak English, you might not realize how shit those actors right. actually are. Yeah, right. You know, well, and not even can... actors, but like also the like cultural references and kind of like how like disgusting, yeah, and misogynistic. Yeah, a lot of um, you know, probably I mean, I'm not Chinese or I've never been to China, so I don't know what their gender politics or whatever is like. And I... And I and it's like I don't know what their perspective is on it. Like maybe they're just laughing at us, you know. Like mm-hmm. that's fine. That's that's how I think. I think that would be very appropriate to do Marvel something like that. Really but, yeah, but like I feel like one of the factors that they have, like it's kind of cool because all American movies are like foreign movies, and you know we kind of have a yeah, factor right. of like right. like of coolness to a foreign film. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, right. So. Let's, <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. Like, I I might appreciate Transformers more if it was a foreign movie to me. I don't know. Maybe I I wouldn't, but maybe I mean, mean, it might be Transformers might be there, like Godzilla, you know, like sure, sure, Japan, or like maybe like they Godzilla is like Marvel over there, you know, they love the fucking Godzilla movies, they take it seriously, but we over here, like, kind of. You know, just kind of like watching washers punch each other and have a goofy old time. You know, yeah. We don't I know. Think, I don't know. I think, I think at the end of the day, Michael Bay is still. I also think he's shit. a piece of shit human being. You know, yeah, he does not I'm seem like a good person at all. all. Like, if he was oh. a nice person, like if he yeah. seemed like a genuine person, I wouldn't talk shit about it. I don't, I don't like his movies, but I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't like be mean to the guy. But yeah. he's a fucking piece of garbage. So I I don't I mean any person that literally is like I mean there's like reports of him literally just being on set and just being like telling a caravan to just shoot up a girl's fucking skirt. He's yeah. Like fucking I'm just like fuck you. Fuck it's just like yeah, I mean, a lot of his movies just seem to express this really not intelligent sexism. Yeah, him. but also he's a fucking idiot. I mean, there's a movie called um, Pay the Game that um that he made in 2012. Like this is when I like really started like hate Michael Bay, like in terms of like a person and like a filmmaker, because like I didn't like you know. I mean, like, I like, I'm not gonna lie, I, I, like, some of his movies I enjoy, like, he made, like, The Rock, which is, like, a 90s action movie that's, like, really fun, it stars Nicolas Cage, Sean Connery, and, um, Ed Harris, it's about, like, cool. I can't remember, it's about, like, them escaping Alcatraz, and, like, it's a fucking yeah. giant, insane, you know, action movie in the 90s. And then he made the Bad Boys movies, which I enjoy, the original ones, the first one. Uh, which is pretty fun. Um, but other than that, like, that's where my enjoyment of Michael Bay stops. But yeah. he made a movie called Pay the Game, 
It says like Wallery the Rock, and it's based on a true, an insane true story about these bodybuilders, these dumb ass bodybuilders who like playing like rob a bank, and I feel like the story is like, and then they like kill, they killed a bunch of people, like they shot. You know, people like as they're robbing, like, they got arrested because their plan yeah. is so fucking stupid. Like, they're gung ass bodybuilders that kind of rob the thing. <laughs> yeah. Which is a funny story, right? Which is a kind of funny story. But, um, so what he tried to do was like a dark comedy. Um, yeah. and the thing that, like, I genuinely was actually kind of offended by the movie because of the way that. He seemed to not care about any of the victims of this event. Like these, these we're supposed to be enjoying and laughing at these dumb guys, like, like killing people. You know, and yeah. this is a true story. If it wasn't a true story, you know, if it was like just an original film that he was, like, oh, kind of like funny, I guess. But this was like a true story, and like real people's lives were lost and he was treating it like it was a joke, like a farce. Mm -hmm. um, and what also made me really upset is like, I remember when the movie came out, um, like the victim's families like came out being like, not like very like, kind of offended by the movie and kind of like, yeah. not um, like, not uh, nice about the movie and i'm not blaming like mark waller and rock or anything that, that are in it i mean they're actually really good in it and really funny but it's the yeah. way that the film is made and yeah well out. we kind of have this thing cut out really horribly you know? it sounds like it's kind of a quintessential uh description of this problem that people try to put on quentin tarantino of fetishizing violence and glorifying right. this horror and stuff, which I think, like, like that, it's a yeah, good point. Quentin and a situation has real, way better intentions, right? Know? That's what I was exactly what yeah. I was going to say. And it's just like, like for I example, think... in Watch Part of Common Hollywood, you know, like a, yeah. a weirdo would look at that and be like, at the end of that movie, would be like, oh, like, why are we enjoying this guy just beating a woman's face into the yeah, poster? but it's like. I don't think you're understanding the, the point of what's yeah, going it's, on it's, here, it's, all, it's already it's always about the minutia of understanding the tone of specific context, you know? Because like yeah, if you, exactly. It's if all about you describe, context. If, if yeah. you describe something, it's just like I laughed when um, Brad Pitt's character smashed a female's character face into into a fire pit. I did laugh and yeah. like cheer when that happened. Yeah, right. But if you if I don't give you the context, I sound like a yeah. fucking like, crazy yeah, person. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. It's like that's a not, joke. It's like that's a not, fucking dude. It's like the same thing of like comedy. When you hear like if you read something that maybe Segura or or any comedian really like yeah. Rogan or anybody just read on paper what they like some like in their specials like what they say. Yeah, you know, you're like, what the like? He's hor he's horrifying, but you don't have the context of like what the joke is and what he's joking about. Yeah. You know, and like that's like such a, you're so right. It's all about the context of like what, like, you can't just just say the word, you know, retard or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's the context of it. Where, like, I'm talking about how you can't say that word, <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, I'm yeah, not, yeah. like, calling anybody that or anything. It's, like, it's weird that, you know, it, I totally, uh, totally And I, that. I think the kind of the problem is it's, like, it's a hard way to say it's, like, what's the right way to do it and what's the wrong way to do it? Because a lot of time, it's just sort of a gut reaction. And then yeah. through, and then you need to do, like, really intensive analysis to understand why is that problematic and this is not um uh -huh. in my experience i think that's the case but i imagine like with something with like the michael bay film that turned out to be really offensive it's like it's cool to try something but you have to recognize when something doesn't work and take actions to try to then make it work or in, yeah, right. in, along yeah. those ways and it sounds like that was not an instant where he successfully I mean, was able I was to do that kinda, like i was just a good guy like i would have like be mad if like i didn't think i don't think the movie is funny at all like i, yeah. I also think michael bay's humor is like I mean, he is devoid of humor. He is a. I agree. He's not I agree. funny. 
Like, you know, Mark Wahlberg is a fucking great actor. He's fucking great. He's actually proven that he's very funny. Um, yeah. He's awful in those Transformers movies that he's in. He's awful. He's not funny. He's terrible. Um, and, uh, like, there's, like, some actors in those Transformers movies that are, like, fucking great at John Turturro. John Turturro yeah. is in fucking Transformers movies. And he's... The, one of the worst parts of those fucking movies. Like, mm-hmm. and it's John Turturro. Dude, he's fucking, like, he's awesome, you know? So, like, it's all the director's fault, man. It's yeah. all his fault, you know? Yeah, it just seems like, like it just... Making John Turturro, making John Turturro so unlikable that I want to jump on the screen and strangle his character Yeah, that's pretty bad. Feat. It's a feat. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> I love John Turturro. You know, it's a real it's a real shame because uh, a director and an editor, I would say, mm-hmm. really has a lot of pressure to. Uh, they have a they have a lot of power to really manipulate how something is going to look like. Yeah. So it's like an actor might have like maybe they felt like John Turturro felt like he did like one of his best performances on yeah, this. Set. Totally, I doubt totally. it, but maybe. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But yeah. like, but like, if that was right. the case, he could have had his best right. performance ever, and they could have fucked Dude, it up. Anthony Hopkins was in the last <laughs> Transformers movie, and he's horrible. It's yeah, Anthony Hopkins. Like yeah. that's like a feat. You know, that's yeah. like impressive. Honestly, like good for you, Michael Bay. You made yeah. one of the greatest actors alive look like he's never acted in his, in his life before that's pretty impressive it is really impressive <laughs> it's really impressive and it's it's sad. also i don't think that, uh, anthony hopkins is really good as fuck you know i think he's like you know i kind of want a house that i'll do yeah i'll do this you know? yeah yeah i yeah, don't right. care like dude more power to him but yeah uh he probably wasn't giving the best performance he ever could could have given but yeah. you know still (laughs) i always wonder about situations like that when you get to be these places of uh i can't think of an example and i I don't mean this as like a criticism like fuck the rich and all these like expensive people like it's 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 a valid criticism but that's not what i'm trying to say um like i'm always like i'm just thinking about it it's just like if you have all this money like anthony hopkins like if you're well off Maybe he was in like a pit, a financial pit. But it's like, why yeah. would you decide to waste your time on a movie that like you probably know is not going to be good? Like, are did well, you get I mean, convinced? I, maybe? I don't know. Maybe he like has like maybe it really you is know, just the money. Family, you know, you know, like maybe like he was like you yeah, know, he right. Has, like he probably has like I don't even know how many kids. Probably has, like I don't know. you know like it's also he, the like maybe he was like shit. Like I haven't paid my entire. My, my kids college tuition yet I'll yeah this movie. that will kind of fill you know yeah. that there's some actors that don't really care about like they you're right like, there's some actors that don't they don't care you know and that's yeah. like, i don't really care like that's just your career man like i don't yeah. really care like i see uh, snoop dogg i see snoop dogg on snoop all dogg of these fucking it's like I, dude like why are you doing this yeah right but he's, still, he's still i mean i love snoop dogg but like yeah. more power to him like if he wants to be on a fucking Corey feldman song whatever like, you feel him, like man. dude yeah i feel like he should have said no to this one you know yeah. like keep your own like artistic integrity intact a little bit you know yeah like, yeah you know? i don't know i don't know man I, I mean, think if the, I was an artist, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. I'd definitely be more cute, picky and cheesy. But I, mean, I don't know. Maybe if I like it, found myself in a financial, well, hit, I, I think another Lamborghini, and I yeah. didn't pay for it. I, was like, Shit. <laughs> I gotta do a feature right now. <laughs> I, I think that like there's two factors going on because one, one factor. Features, uh, do that do on Instagram. <laughs> i think i think that i think that there's two factors going on because you're right i think one of it is like our personalities it's like i know me as a person like i i am very 
I, I just, I, I mean, I don't necessarily I, I, like, I just want to do the shit that I want to do. Like, that's also, what makes me, fires me up. Also, but I, knows, maybe Anthony Hopkins likes the transformers. Right. <laughs> and I mean, the, the yeah. other thing is that when you're in a position as big as Anthony Hopkins, is the fucking pressure behind being Anthony Hopkins. And sometimes, yeah. like, it's really hard to tell and you're not thinking about quality. And sometimes you just feel like you just need to get on to the next thing and work. So it's like, I don't, I, I don't give them really, I don't give them too much shit for doing that. I don't lose respect for them for all those things because you don't really know what's going to be good or not. And sometimes you just kind of, no, there's just don't. like a, I mean, you, you just have pressure. So actors say that, you know, like, you don't, you really don't know. You, you don't know, yeah. like, you have no you idea. Upset, like, you'll be like, I hope it really turns out good. Like you, you know, don't know you're an actor. You like you don't you're not. You know, you don't know what you don't know what they're shooting. You don't know the, how this is gonna edit together, you know. And you know, and I think both of us can attest to this being like trying to make films when we were in film school. Um, that like when you're making the film, no matter what, it kind of seems like shit. It yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you are just shooting the raw footage of people standing and talking to each other, trying right. to get those lines together, yep. it really looks like trash. Yep. And sometimes it's like you're on a set. Sometimes you can tell, you know, it's just like, this is going to suck. I can tell, yeah. you know, <laughs> you tell, yeah. <laughs> basically what you could determine for me is like a lot of times there was films I was on set for. It's like, this is going to suck. And then it suck. And then they cut it together. And it's just like, that worked. I'm a star. Yeah, right, yeah, but right. you know what you can tell is like, okay, that's not going to make it into the cut. That's not going to make it at all. Yeah, dude. Right. Yeah, you could, yeah, you yeah, can yeah, sort yeah. of guess that a little bit easier, exactly. but yeah. that kind of strays from the point of like Anthony right. Hopkins and Transformers. So we don't know what that set was like. That just reminded me of what of the, best things I ever read Samuel L. Jackson say. Yeah. I mean, Samuel L. Jackson has been in so many iconic movies. It's kind of hilarious. Um, and he's been in so many movies, too. But he's been in so many flops as well because he's in so many movies. He works a lot. He works a lot, but his philosophy is that exact thing. Is that you know, he's a smart guy. He is not an idiot. I mean, he's yeah. very, very, very. Also, he started late, so he, he didn't get famous until he was right. older. Yeah, so he, he kind of yeah, he right. has the respect of the grind too. And he was saying though, like you don't know, like he takes almost every role because you don't you don't know, like some random movie he did with uh, you know, uh, fuck, oh man, what was that fucking movie? Um. The Long Kiss Goodnight, you know, like, mm -hmm. which is a great, like, 90s action movie. Like, you didn't think that that was going to become, like, a hit or, or anything. Like, he, he just did it because he thought it was cool, you know, but yeah. you don't know. You don't know, man. And he's probably, he's been in so many movies that we couldn't even name that are like, yeah. what even is that? Because yeah, he you, turned out to be whatever. You, you know? know, you actually, you actually turned me on to a huge epiphany because I just realized that I'm thinking about this from the perspective of being a director. I'm thinking yeah. of like the final movie and that's what like I'm represented as a director in the final movie. An actor is represented in their performance, like in mm. the onset real time. So right. Anthony Hopkins, if he's just a really passionate fucking actor, he's like, I don't give a shit what I'm on. Yeah, I just want to act. Dude. Yeah. There's also actors like that that are like, just want to, have a cool role or just be yeah. in the role or but, any role they but, don't give but, a but, fuck like, there's they also the work. other side of that for sure with like what's happening with Johnny Depp mm -hmm. um, which <laughs> Johnny Depp is I don't know what is going on with him but like I like he I was, I was looking at this thing that was really interesting where there was an interview that he did in the 90s where we did this cool movie called Dead Man mm -hmm. Dead Dead, dead Dead, Dead Man? Man. It was a Jim Jarvis movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Back in the 90s, he was indie guy. You know, he yeah, was, right. He was a fucking badass actor, man. He was like, he was like, the, he was doing these cool, small movies, like, what's well, the Miller Grape, you know, Dead Man, like, uh, Ed Wood, you know, uh, Edward uh, Scissorhands at the time wasn't, you know, this big hit that it turned out to be. He yeah, was working with Tim Burton before Tim Burton started making bullshit, and so, <laughs> and so, uh, so, but it's interesting. There's an interview where he's where, when he's doing Gunman, and they asked, and he said something like, 
oh, I'll never be Blockbuster Boy. You know, I don't want to do Blockbusters, which is hilarious to think about now because he is fucking Blockbuster Boy. He you is. Kidding, kidding me? Yeah. Dude, he is like, bro, he is like, you know, and what cha- it's interesting to think about that, right? Because what changed? What changed in his psyche? And I think what it was was money and it was success. You know, he did that first Pirates movie uh, and it blew him up. Blew him yeah. up. Amazing performance. You know, got Ronnie for an Oscar. That movie became a national franchise, right? And then ever since then, you know, he's just doing, he did the Mad Hatter and the fucking bullshit Alice in Wonderland. He played Willy Wonka the fucking bullshit Willy Wonka movie. Not you know, good. like he just he, now he just you don't see him in an indie movie anymore. You basically no. just see him in in giant blockbusters now. And like and I don't know what the fuck is going on with him right now. You know, because yeah. he's a, and it's sad to see because he's an awesome actor. Like when he really tries, he's fucking he's fucking awesome. He's Johnny yeah, Depp. He, he really and is. So like it's just but it's interesting to see like someone who had this perspective of what we're talking about. It's like I only kind of want to do movies that I think will um, be successful or be a really cool movie that maybe not yeah. successful but will have legs. You know, kind of like what Gosling is doing. You know, or a Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio or Jake Gyllenhaal. That every because he's one of those actors that those actors that. When you see a Jake, when Jake Gyllenhaal is in a movie, you kind of want to see it because you know it's yeah. going to be interesting and you know it's going to be kind of... And that's the power of an actor, too, that for, like, a normal person like that isn't following, you know, directors the way that we are, for a normal person, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal is in these awesome fucking movies that you love. You know, he chooses really cool movies. And yeah. so someone is more likely to be... You know, actors is, is a interesting role because you're kind of a spokesman for the film in a way absolutely right? absolutely and so it's it's interesting it, it, it's you know it probably is for some of these like like maybe mid-tier actors that aren't you know the lyric on of the world it's <laughs> kind of hard to pick you know a movie sometimes or yeah because and it, but at the end of the day it's all luck you don't know you know prisoners <laughs> prisoners this is like one of my favorite Joan Hall movies ever. It's fucking amazing. That movie could have ended up being garbage or a night crawl. Yeah. You know, you don't know. The script's yeah. amazing, but you don't you don't know. You know, the, the page sometimes doesn't translate to the screen. And that happens yeah. a lot. A I lot. Think, I think I think the thing, yeah. And I think the thing that um if I were in those shoes, or I guess I can just speak as myself as an artist, my criteria is not so much is it's like, is this film going to be success? Is this film going to be good? It's cool. Yeah, do yeah, do yeah. do I want am do I want and am I passionate to work with these people who are yeah, working right. on That's this idea? Yeah, or right. is this idea so good and I'm so passionate yeah. I don't care how bad or asshole well, these people working on it I are. just remember, like I just think about DiCaprio, the Revenant. You hear yeah. about the stories of making the Revenant. Brutal. It sounds like Brutal. the worst experience in the world. But yeah. he's doing it because he knows and hopes that the movie is going to be fucking badass. You know? Yeah. And it was fucking badass. And yeah. Amazing. So, I bet, and I bet if you asked him, I bet if you asked him, Hey, if this movie wasn't good, how would you feel? He would say it was worth it, a hundred percent. Right, I'm sure yeah. he would right. say that. Right, I'm right. sure of like it. I, you know, work with one of the best directors working today, and the yeah. experience was was great. You know, because I'm sure for you him, always have he... to think about that with actors too. Because some of yeah. them, like I hear about, like also like interviews with people where, like, <laughs> like maybe a movie and, I, and like turn out very good, but they talk about how fun the experience was making the movie. You know. Yeah, you know, you gotta think about like what actor chooses a movie. It's like, oh, like, like Adam like, Sandler. Like Adam Sandler has Adam a blast Sandler's making the movies he yeah. makes. Yeah, he, and he just, it's like he surrounds himself with his friends. Like, yeah, you know that's like Sandler is like the king model of like if I was an actor like that big, dude, I would follow his footsteps. Like just pick like like just work with the same people every time. Literally yeah. all your friends that you're close with and just make you know, movies and stuff, because yeah. even if the movie doesn't turn out 
good. You, you still had a good time. Yeah. You know? I think, I think it all depends. Like certain personalities, you know, just need some different motivations to make go about being alive you know like some yeah. people need that really heavy work where they're challenging every single time to grow and do something crazy and innovative other people just need work that's fun other people fucking do every single day and it doesn't matter what it is so you know i'm glad i mentioned this because it turned out to be like i, I didn't think about this very much and this is kind of me have a better perspective on why these actors like because i used to be like also like this actor i respected so much why would he do this and bring himself down yeah. to this level it's like it's so <laughs> sad so well you're well, not the only one that has that perspective you know that's another thing that sucks to be actor you know like because you can do these movies and, and i got egg well and yeah. you kind of put on a blame for it which 100 percent shouldn't be that's why you're a spokesman for these movies because say like you know if you're in a movie and it doesn't and people will blame you yeah absolutely it's kind of fucking bizarre you know i never do that but yeah you know, well it's like i also will. i also don't blame people for doing that because it is what we're trained at that is the the actors who yeah. we have the no, most intimate relationship with saying. but you're right you know I, i'm also not saying you're not wrong at that's all that's part of it's the like, job of an actor you know yeah. that is part of the job when you want to be a movie star or Reynolds, especially a huge you know? movie star especially yeah. a huge movie star that's comes part of the job man. that's just part of it um but yeah it's interesting um but it's also sad to see like like it's really sad to see sometimes like a, an actor that you really know to like kill it in a performance and it's just not like his movies are just kind of like flopping and not like not doing well and then they yeah. like fade away you know that that always happened to like ryan reynolds you know ryan yeah. reynolds before deadpool came out you know he was no nah, he was not he really was around not doing, i mean i love ryan reynolds i've always loved him but his movies were just not great they were not uh they just weren't very good and yeah it wasn't until deadpool came out that was the perfect perfect role for him you know yeah. to, to the point that it's scary <laughs> uh, like just how like he's like just born to play that role yeah um, right and so and, but it's awesome you know he had this break and now he's in like much better movies that are because he's just maybe getting better offers or has more creative control or he has more options he can, he can choose what he can be in you know so yeah actors like have to pick something because we're like, what about these bills I gotta pay? You know? Yeah, so right. I gotta pick one of this is the only movie that's being offered to me. Might as well do it, you know, because and that might end up being R I P D the rest <laughs> of peace department, you know, like which is a fucking garbage piece of shit. And you don't know <laughs> Oh, Jeff Bridges <laughs> black ripoff movie. And he was like, Okay, I'll be oh. in this red and black ripoff movie. And like they, you know, yeah, I don't, yeah, but you don't know. Maybe he was just like Jeff Bridges. I want to work with the dude, you know. Yeah, you know, like I would. I'd be like, you know, I was an actor, and that maybe that script is amazing. Maybe it's like, oh wow, it's like red and black, but it's like kind of edgier and yeah, cool. I'll be in this. I get to work with the dude. Look, and also, dude. another hilarious <laughs> R.I.P.D. is another hilarious example of Kevin Bacon being in every single ripoff Kevin movie Bacon. ever. Kevin Bacon, man. Yeah, he's, he's in everything. There's like a funny, like, there's a funny, like, meme, like, years ago that, like, the seven steps to Kevin Bacon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it yeah. Was so funny, man. Yeah. And it's funny. It's kind of shocking that, like, it kind of was pretty. Like, I did it once and I was like, oh, this is really funny and how, yeah. like, like, accurate this something is. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. It's really hysterical. But, um, funny, how do you feel about transitioning to our movie of the week? I feel pretty good about it. But let me turn the light back on. Okay. <laughs> Oh, catch my breath. Close my eyes. Take a quick nap. Sleepy, sleepy. Sleepy, sleepy. Ah. Are you back? Oh. 
Hello. Oh. I got... I got a I got a warning that my internet connection is unstable. Yeah, you're breaking up, but I think you're okay now. Okay, okay, I'm back. Like I'm yeah. not crazy yeah. breaking up. Broke up a little bit. I don't really understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you I played it. Got, off. I got bits and pieces of it. But well, I, you you played it off perfectly. I it. Yeah, you, it seemed it seemed good. It seemed good. <laughs> it seemed like it seemed like you understood what I was saying. Um. Okay. Uh, okay. We, okay. we didn't stop. We didn't stop recording, right? We can just no, go no, right no, into no, it. No, 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 okay. No. I'll um, talk jack shit. <laughs> okay, so the movie that we're going to talk about this week is one of my old favorites. And I also realized that this is thematically appropriate for the last couple of films we picked, uh, meaning uh, Fritz the Cat and Close Encounters, because they're all sort of in the same uh 1970s yeah, time right, period yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah, right. um and we're going to talk about francis ford coppola's the conversation yeah, yeah. this is yeah. this is a movie that i saw in high school and then learned more about in college because it seems to be a film school staple and for yeah. good reason yeah. and it is kind of a lesser known masterpiece of the francis for coppola who is the director who also created yeah. the godfather um and apocalypse now and apocalypse and now Dracula. <laughs> and, <other things. laughs> and the conversation is a gene hackman film which is about this surveillance guy who's who is monitor who was ordered to um record the conversation between this these two these two young couple, this young couple, yeah. and he slowly discovers this, this some kind of weird plot, and has this uh, uh, conflict within himself about turning in the tapes because he's worried that his his client is going to kill them essentially, right. and it's sort of centered around his inner turmoil and conflict about yeah. what his part in these these people's potential murders. Right, and um. Oh, this, Go ahead, go ahead. What do you? Yeah, what I is? To say, I saw this movie for the first time in high school. Or in, yeah, in college. Um, it was I don't even I had never even heard of this movie. Um, until I got into college, and I think it was freshman year, like first film class I took. I think this was one of the first films that I even watched for school. Um, wow. Yeah, and I remember being like blown away by it. But continue. <laughs> yeah and i think that it was for me it was a similar experience it was some of one of those breakthrough moments as i was it was kind of one of those first films when i first started watching films in high school seriously that is yeah um that it was like wow this is something else this is of a different caliber than other things i have seen like mm -hmm. to me it was just it really resonated with me how crazy good Gene Hackman's performance was yeah. and just how unusual the subject matter was. Like um, yeah. I loved, I was, I was also really getting into use recording my own music and stuff. Yeah, so right. I was really sort of into him using all of this audio equipment, especially the old analog tapes and like yeah. all the buttons and sounds right. <laughs> and how they manipulated sound inside of the movie. Yeah, it was right. all really exciting and innovative yeah, to me. Totally. Yeah. And it was, and it's, it's something that has had us, I think a very similar response around a lot of film fans yeah, yeah. Um, uh, to this day. And yeah. uh, I was really glad I bought, I, unfortunately, I bought two copies of this because I bought a, 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 the a Region B version, which had a, cool, <laughs> a much yeah. cooler cover, a slip right. cover and shit. Yeah. But I couldn't play it on my dumb PS4, so then I had right. to buy the dumb. Well, we still have to put the other one in the cool case. You know? Yeah, right. Eva still said that it. too. It, it made me feel a little bit better, well, and I think that the, I think that the same thing. Dude, you, but... you are experiencing <laughs> the the. The, the beginnings of the stressful Blu-ray collector. <laughs> yeah, I, I've done this a couple of times. I'm hoping this will be one of the last times I make this mistake. Yeah. Um, but it probably won't be. But I've I've done this a couple of times <laughs> where I bought an Norwegian yeah, yeah, B Blu-ray. Yeah. You, it's kind of something you have to get under your belt. But yeah. um, anyways, this movie it's still it's still one of my favorites. I it's, really it's liked fucking amazing, and I, I think, still like, like watching it a it's lot. Cool that we're talking about this movie too because I think like in my circles, I mean, like I 
it bugs me that no one, not a lot of people know this movie. Yeah. Well, and I think because, you know, in, like, it is talked about a lot in film school, and I think a lot of people who, like, study film and, like, um, went to film school, like, I know, like, this movie has one of my favorite memes in the film Twitter community. Um, yeah. At the end of this movie is memed a lot. Um, yeah, like the very, and, very ending? Yeah, him in the apartment just playing the fast <laughs> by himself. And the yeah. Great memes using that uh, image and that gif. Um, and so I know that this movie is like known and people talk about it. Um, but it's weird because, you know, I, I love Francis Ford Coppola. You know, I think like his masterpiece films are The Godfather Part 1 and 2. And Apocalypse Now are some of the best movies ever made, especially yeah. in the seventies. Um, they are such they're they're almost they're they're required doing, you know, yeah. for almost any person that and, and, likes and to, movies. <laughs> and just because it's relevant to what we have been talking about, for people who maybe don't quite realize this, but Coppola and Spielberg were contemporaries. Yeah, right, so just yeah, to put right. this into context, all George of this Lucas. shit. Was yeah, all of this shit was happening at the same time. Yeah, right. Um, that this thing, which interestingly, Harrison Ford's actually in this the conversation yeah, yeah, before yeah. A New Hope, which is yeah, really right. cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And before yeah, Indiana Jones. Like, oh yeah, that's so funny that he's in this. And he's great in this too. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. awesome. Yeah, he's awesome. This. Yeah. Um, but another thing that's just cool about this movie too is that blew me away the first time I watched it, and I remember like. In class, we had a discussion about it. I remember bringing this up. And I remember like talking yeah. about how this movie, like, is kind of crazy that this movie came out in '74, and this movie is most likely even more relevant than it was in 1974, mm-hmm. especially with the uh, surveillance aspect. Of yes, definitely. '74 because surveillance definitely. is at an all-time high now. Um, probably someone is listening to us as we speak. Um, no <laughs> yeah, which is really uh, creepy. And, yeah, really creepy. Yeah. And so, what this movie is about is like you're getting at is kind of the paranoia and the and yes. almost who happens. Harry Call is his character's name. This is a great character. It's name. one of my one of my favorite character yeah. name of all time. Yeah, I think it's a great yeah. name. And uh, especially about his descent into paranoia uh, madness, and uh, but Doug in a really subtle and not like over the top way sometimes like you see these kind of movies that are kind of about somebody losing it you know uh yeah or, or going into some state of paranoia and kind of playing it for these over the top performances but Hugh Hackman in this movie is so fantastic he's so subtle and so um just real that like it, it's it's amazing to watch. And Hugh Hackman is was an amazing actor in the seventies, and you know he's retired now. But um, you know, he, yeah, he crazy actor. amazing performances. Uh, if you haven't seen the French Connection, also watch that movie too. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, well, um, maybe maybe we'll talk about that at some point because it's great. I but there's so many things that I love about this movie. Um, yeah, I, this is like the fourth time I've seen this. This is like. Yeah. I fucking I I like I, I agree with what you said. Like I had never seen anything like this before. And it was like because it was a movie that if you if you were to re- <laughs> if you were to There's a lot of salt in that <laughs> in that last sip. If you were to kind of read maybe on paper what this movie's about, you might be like, this is kind of boring. This doesn't yeah. really sound like a movie. This doesn't really sound <laughs> yes, yes cinematic. And that was something that's super appealing about this movie, is the way that it uses uh, mise en scène and, and, and cinema as an art form to very much um, put the audience in the shoes of a paranoid man. Or, uh, yeah. And, and the, a lot of the voyeuristic aspects to this movie is really really cool and really interesting to talk yeah, about dude. the way that this movie is shot um and um the way that kind of the story goes but um i kind of want to start with like 
the opening scene, the opening shot is absolutely fantastic. And it's incredibly famous too. Yeah, it's an, it's it, it is an iconic shot. Again, well, you know, maybe it's not even fair to say that because it's iconic to people. I feel like this movie is kind of like um is kind of like uh MF Doom, you know, where he's it's <laughs> yeah, like yeah, re- right. it's 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 kind he's of like a in the underground. Very, yeah. very, very popular. This is this is your favorite filmmaker's favorite film yeah, is what right. it kind of tends yeah, right, to tends right. to be. Right. Um but yeah, dude, th- this has such an incredible opening scene and I was yeah. I was I was yeah. oogling over this opening yeah. shot because <laughs> there's no like sound at all when you're at this googling googling <laughs> and i just think it's it's like it's like it's it's really now it gives me chills like when you're zooming in and you get right. that first sound of the distorted audio right. like come in like right. <laughs> that little bit yeah. like when you because it's it's this extreme zoom from super far away that you go it's you incredibly slow. difficult to do by the way I don't yeah know how this in the 1974 dude yeah. are you yeah. kidding me well the crazy part about this opening shot is what it is is it is it's it, it, Opens on where I think this is where, this is in Chicago, correct? Is this um, this is? Some city, no it's idea. a big city. Yeah. I don't, I can't remember what city it is, but it's a plaza, and there are like a lot of people, Shit maybe like a hundred, hundred people or something. At least, yeah. And they're all rolling around, and this is kind of this wide shot of slowly zooming in. And as an audience member, you don't really know what you're supposed to be looking at, and you don't no. know, uh, and what kind of leads into kind of the how Francis Ford Coppola directed this movie because it's crazy to think that he came off this is the movie he made after The Godfather and what I love about that is The Godfather is such a grand movie right it's this big yeah. epic gangster story that is shot with like you know a news some of the great best cinematography ever put the celluloid is in that movie incredible lighting shot and this movie feels like an indie movie compared yeah to that. yeah it, it really feels does like this very small intimate movie and then i love when filmmakers do that when they make like this they, their next film is coming off of like a giant hit or a giant like epic movie is always this like kind of small kind of like into the like almost passion project almost yeah and that's what this movie feels like but the way that this movie opens it is very leads into the surveillance aspect to this movie because we feel like we are uh spying on somebody yeah, yeah. which which is it's like it's so powerful for, on so many levels because in addition to it being aesthetically beautiful and technically incredibly impressive yeah also does what you're talking about where it sets up the themes of the movie in terms of story as well as the theme of the cinematography feeling very voyeuristic in yeah. the, just the first shot that's yeah, it's, right. it's it's so it's crazy shot too. It's like it's, three little. and i feel like it's and i feel like also how there is there's so much information tied to every shot of this movie like this first shot and it's not like like sometimes you get a movie and it's just like wow that shot had a lot of layers to it i feel like almost all of the shots in this movie have that kind of symbolic Uh like impact to it that this first shot like shows it's just like it's it's such an incredible just capturing of the entire movie in that first shot also it's interesting too because this is how they like introduce harry to us and it's like a really and it's cool because it's such an interesting weird way to introduce the main character in the movie (laughs) like this is not what you really should do you know like on paper this is not what you're taught this is not how to introduce the main character yeah. But it's done in a way that is so awesome. And you might not really think about it like this when you first see it, but when you see it like multiple times, like the way that it zooms in the line, it starts with the line, right? You kind of focus yeah. on this line character. And it's kind of going on to these people. And it goes up to Harry. And the way that Harry kind of like... I thought that was so brilliant. Looks at him and is kind of so like brilliant. denies him and walks away and then we follow harry yeah and, and then, then it's like, kind of that's the main to, like, character 
And, but, like, it's interesting because you got that one goal that you kind of get a lot of, like, what this character's kind of about, you know, that he, what he's like. And he's obviously, like, super, um, like, paranoid about things. Yeah. Like, kind of looking around and, and you get a lot of, like, it's just a great character moment that you get um, in the first shot, in the Which, first minutes of the movie. And I think that, you know, it's there's kind of, like, this... Um... I guess it's, I don't know if irony is the right word to it, but this uh, paradox to it, where I think the reason why, I understand this, but I think the reason why a lot of people won't really have a trouble engaging with this movie is because of how how slow of slow, a burn yeah. it is it's yeah. very yeah. very slow and it's also yeah. like it's so cerebral and i don't mean to sound pretentious like yeah. that like this is a smart movie it is a smart movie yeah. but there there is just so much that you 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 kind of have to really you have to think a lot to figure out what's going on which yeah, i right. love about it but i get that that can be really frustrating yeah, absolutely, because yeah. like it, it might take you a second i can understand if you don't have any experience watching movies and you're watching this, it might take you a really long time to realize that Harry Call is the main character. Yeah, you right. know, yeah, I right. can, I get that, but yeah. I also like for me after watching this movie and watching it again and again and again, the paradox about this is I feel like what you're saying is that this movie just starts moving immediately, like mm -hmm. right after that first shot from that long shot. I feel like it it represents Harry Call as a character right Absolutely. there yeah. from that extreme yeah. long shot where you just see him walking around yeah. and it's like it's in the way that they capture him on that camera right. and the way that Gene is is walking and immediately right. as he's walking it's not like just walking to like show oh it's Gene Hackman the yeah. movie star who's playing the main character it's right. like no he's going he's doing his job in the movie he's trying to check out these people yeah. he goes immediately to do his job which is yeah, right is, is really it's, it, it's really weird because it's shot like like not like a film like it's shot like mm -hmm. somebody is like like you know somebody is it's weird because like i was just watching this and i was like it's so i wonder how they like shot this because yeah i wonder if those people are even extras like i don't even know like it feels like that you yeah. just kind of walk in it feels like a Saki brothers thing yeah i go to Saki brothers i go for like uncut jobs for example like a lot of the extras in that movie are fucking they're real people and so adam sandler they had to shoot it in a way where sandler could just walk into a horde of people and no one would even that guy you know? yeah the way that uh he's moving and there might be a similar thing going on here because in 1974 like who happened was he was a movie star he was, you know, yeah. people knew who he was it wasn't yeah. like this, this wasn't like you know, the French Connection was a giant movie, you know, yeah. a huge movie, and so people <laughs> definitely would know who he is. Um, so it's interesting because like he's, it feels really authentic. What I'm trying to yeah. say, like that. No, like, yeah, no, dude, you're you're absolutely right. 100 percent agree. Uh, real quick, I've noticed that I don't see the red recording symbol on the Zoom call. Did we I stop? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. We 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 are still recording. Yeah. Okay. Back in back into it. I'll cut that out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. No. I think that that's a great way of. I think the comparison to the Safdie brothers is incredibly accurate. I think that that is like the most modern example of what this film feels mm -hmm. like and i think that this is like almost like a direct inspiration that's, that's crazy because, absolutely like, there, there's maybe not really like the rest of the film but yeah really like the opening scene where... i mean even even in the series like um i'm thinking about the the party scene and also yeah. the the right. when they're when they're at the convention that has it's not as extreme as the safety brothers with the amount yeah, of like right. people going the on overlap of dialogue but i feel of, like yeah. i feel like they i feel like the safety brothers love this movie because you're so <laughs> right yeah, and like yeah. the way that they that that this kind of translates to to that kind of feeling too right. and also also the thing that i think is a similar comparison um is the the deep psychology of the characters in this right. film you know which is which is the current which is so important throughout you know right. and it's also it's also the thing i love about this movie is that in the way 
it's um i was thinking about this with god's when i brought up the thing about people being uncomfortable with like not having dialogue or just uh-huh. silence in like godzilla and stuff um this is a movie where it's like there isn't the, the, there is dialogue and stuff but the dialogue is never never exposition yeah like, yeah no none of the dialogue is telling you what the fuck is going on yeah you right. have to follow it based on the shots and yeah. And the like, the expressions and the like, you could basically totally. have to get. One of the things I find so fascinating about this movie was is me trying to guess what Harry Call is thinking at any yeah, moment right. in time, because you you look at him and you see it's just like he's thinking about something yeah. really weird, but I can't yeah. figure it out. And that's and that's yeah. kind of like that's kind of what that's kind of like the the puzzle of this whole movie. Yeah, and I think like one of the most interesting things about his character is like why he's doing what he's why is yeah. he a lot of work that he is in? Uh, because, like, I think, so after this incredible opening scene where we kind of, uh, he's obviously kind of looking for this couple, and we get shots of the couple in this kind of shocking rather handheld kind of uh, shallow focus kind of style. Yeah. Where it's, it's very, like, uh, chaotic. Because um, it's, it's, it's really smart the way he shot that, because it's, Harry's looking for somebody, so the the the, the way that they're kind of like hiding, uh, you can't really focus on the two the couple until like yeah. they really get a hold of them. When we see the the guy in the in the um in the building that's like spying on them through the telescope, um, we get those great moments, and then he goes into the van, the surveillance van. Yeah, and we meet uh, Stan, who. <laughs> Is a great funny. character, a fucking <laughs> fantastic character, and he is John. Uh, I can't remember. I can't. I'm going to just say Pizzale, definitely Pizzale. Italian. Yeah, um, <laughs> he, but I love him. He's a great uh, character actor from the seventies. He's also in one of my favorite seventies films, Gone Day Afternoon, which is a mm. fucking fantastic movie. I've never heard um, of that. Really? Oh no! Yeah. It. It's an early Al Pacino movie. It's fucking oh, okay, cool. amazing. Cool. Um, yeah, you would love it. You should I would watch definitely it. watch that. Um, and but he's in that movie. He's amazing in that movie too. And so, but he, so stands his partner, and they're kind of. So we learn that they're trying to spy on somebody. That we, what yeah. we were saying is, we don't. There's no exposition. There's no scene where like. Harry like like goes in and is like, hey, and you look at the couple, like, what are they, what are they saying? You know, we don't know that. This movie is very, like, um, like we're all a fly on the wall. We're just watching yeah. these characters interact and do their job, and yeah, we yeah. don't really, we don't know why they're looking for these people or until a, a long portion of this movie, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but that's not really the focus of the film. I think is what you're getting at. It's more yeah. about Harry as a character, and and it's definitely more of a character study of this of this man. I agree. Uh, yeah, kind of going through this kind of scary job that he ends up being kind of horrifying. Yeah, um, job that he uh, got wrapped up. And and also and also ultimately, I think the story is about um, him unpacking trauma too. And I think it's a it's a story. I didn't really realize that until this my latest viewing of it was realizing how this story is about trauma and PTSD and shit like that. Right. right. Um, But yeah, I think that that's a. I, I think that 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 is a really important aspect of this film is yeah. how we we are just sort of this fly on the wall and we don't really actually know what's going on until much later and there's yeah. sort of like this right. there's this it's this cool well, harry fact. doesn't really go either right right but yeah. the, we but but there's this cool play too on uh this 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 playing with the audience where the characters even though the, the characters don't exactly know what's going on but the audience know even less than what the characters yeah, know, right, which is yeah. really interesting so yeah. it's like we're lagging behind them yeah, as they find right. out stuff which they still don't quite understand then we figure out what yeah. they figure out and that kind of just sort of kind of works throughout the yeah. film and like that's like I definitely want to 
get into that because like that's definitely what I hear in aspects of the movie and like how kind of the mystery and kind of how the conversation the conversation of the movie yeah is is revealed throughout the film it's like yeah because it's definitely my favorite part of it because ultimately this film is a mystery movie which yeah. is really well, yeah. cool yeah yeah, and it's like it's it's kind of like a I mean, you know, it's espionage, it's kind right. of like a thriller, I yeah. like all that kind of stuff. But really what, what Harry Cole's trying to figure out is he's trying to figure out a mystery. Yeah. And I think that's what kind of drives him, and I think that's what he likes about this film. Yeah. Uh, and like, but um after we get that scene, that initial scene of them recording the conversation. The conversation. When he like goes back to his apartment like you learn so much about him just by wa- like watching yeah. him in his life and that's like something that like is should every filmmaker should just take a lesson from this like that i have you know like we don't want to hear what a character's like we want to see what he's like you know and there's that fucking great moment where he goes in his apartment and he has like four locks and he like and he opens the locks and you already know like okay this guy's a little he opens the door and an alarm goes off so he obviously yeah. has like a a a, a a a you know a system and then the best thing ever it's his birthday and he got all this mail and it's just, what you said this movie's very slow and it takes its time and you see him kind of like not happy that he got this mail. You know, he's not the happiest yeah. guy that he got. He got he got some wine as a gift. Right. And he gets the person on the phone that most likely dropped it off, correct? Or or yeah. or someone who gave it to him. It was his I think it was his landlord who he passed yeah. on the way and was right. like, Happy birthday and right. uh and she she saw that she dropped off this and wine. he calls and he goes Basically, uh, how did you get this? How did you get this on birthday? Yeah. And he's like, well, well, like, okay, well, now, uh, my mail's not coming here, and it's gonna be in a locked uh, mailbox, and then just clicks. So, you obviously are like, okay, this guy is a little paranoid about. Yeah. And it's such an interesting character, right? Because he's working in surveillance. Yeah. He's somebody who literally spies on people for a living. He's a private investigator that literally, he's amazing at his job. We know that, like, like through a lot of character moments in this movie and other characters, that he is a badass. He's a yeah. badass surveillance guy. And everybody knows him when he goes to the convention. Everybody knows who Harry Call is. And uh, he has a great reputation within this uh, community. And it's yeah. such an interesting thing that he is so paranoid about people watching him because he knows the technology and the stuff that's out there that can you know spy on him and which kind of leads to his downfall right and and i think (laughs) and i think the other thing about that's so great about that first conversation he has with his landlord is it also sets up how much like first of all how troubled and kind of discontent he is yeah um very how, lonely uh, guy too uh, lonely how it, yeah uh, how yeah. awkward he is he's a really awkward kind of person um yeah. he's uh he can be really intense like he's scary on the phone he's yeah. really intense yeah. even though he has all of these he even though he has these factors that might make him seem kind of meekish and stuff, he's a very intense individual. Uh-huh. And and also, I think what is so interesting is how cantankerous and basically unlikable he kind of is, you know? Right. Which is such a great outward expression of his own discontent that he has with himself. And as yeah. we learn his past trauma working in the field of surveillance. Right. Um, but I think, again, is another kind of factor that I think is a reason why people might turn this movie off or dislike it is because Harry Call is kind of an asshole. Yeah. But it's like, <laughs> he's not an a- he Like, the thing that is so genius about it is that he is an asshole for such human reasons. He is such right. a human yeah. asshole. Right. He's, his cantankerousness and angst and awkwardness all has these such deep rooted themes in the story of the film. Well, that's what like like Drew, Drew Hatton's performance I think is a lot of like 
is what makes him so like he, he's so likable, but he's all but he's also yes. an asshole. Yes, that's, yes. Very like Steve Hackman. He's know? a great he he's like you don't want to follow any other character like, but him. Look at his character in Royal Catalogs. Yeah, I mean, he's an right. asshole, right? Right. Right. You know? right. Like, he has that he just has that quality, that lovable quality of an actor that you want to play in this type of role. He has yeah. a, he has a, he has a, Gene Hackman has a magnetic charisma. Oh, know? yeah. And he's, oh, he's yeah. the kind of guy who, kind of like Adam Sandler, actually, where it's like you look at him and it's like, this guy doesn't really look like much. He's not the most attractive person in the world. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. He's yeah. like, he's like, he's yeah. not super fit Perfect. or anything like that. But yeah. it's like, I can't stop looking at this you guy. Know, I can see Sandler, this is a weird thing, but I can see Sandler kind of having a Gene Hatlin like career as he gets older, like yeah. playing these kind of like roles kind of similar to this. You know, we'll see yeah. that. that I hope when he kind of when he gets older, he does more dramatic roles because he's fucking amazing I, at it. I'd be I'd be so fine if he just keeps making his shit films and every once in a while he just does a yeah whatever. Film. I'd yeah. be fine with that. Yeah, <laughs> and, but um, but yeah, that's a, yeah, it's yeah. He's he has like the everyman, the everyman kind of charisma about him. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Which instantly makes him likable, uh, even though he's kind of an asshole to everybody that he knows and friends with and um, random people yeah but and i think i think the thing that's also about that is that this movie is sort of about like you can tell that this guy needs to go on some kind of journey right you know it's like this guy needs to like learn something or he's figuring out something he's at some kind like in the beginning like a lot of times we have this conventionally we have movies where we start where a character is in a fine situation the situation turns to shit and then they have to fix themselves or something like that or they're in a shit situation and it's clear we're trying to get ourselves out of the shit in this situation he's like on the cusp of some kind of crisis you know we're we're right at the verge of some kind of explosion and we're right as he's about to like explode which is so so the movie starts off just feeling so tense yeah so tense yeah right the whole time yeah and um i guess like it's an interesting movie to talk about because, like, not a lot happens for like the, the like. Yeah, the next significant. The, end, but... the next significant scene that I think is really cool. This is probably my favorite scene. Is when he's, which I think happens right after this, is when he's piecing together the oh, conversation yeah. Yeah, for yeah, the yeah. first that's time. Like, yeah, dude, that, yeah. And- and that's one of the more famous scenes too because yeah. of the usage of you see all his equipment and he's like right. messing around with all of that stuff and we also get the the sort of uh, thematic repetition of the snippets from yeah. the conversation yeah, um, yeah. which we which we see it somewhat in real time but the cool it's i think this is so cool it's it's like you know uh, this is this is a really nerdy and i comparison but it's like you're in a video game and you're like finding these memory fragments as you're playing this game, yeah, as you sort of yeah. piece together. It feels like yeah. you're like finding a puzzle playing, board or something. Dude, I'm playing Jedi Fallen Order right now. Uh-huh. Again. And, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, I there's, play, yeah. yeah, I love, that's like one of my favorite things about that game is like walking up to a little side note, kind of made me laugh. But there's a, you're on a planet and there's like, it's like a um, abandoned kind of empire kind of base. Yeah. And what made me laugh so fucking hard is you walk up to it and there's like a piece of paper on this like house yeah and your drawing stands it and it, and it just says in notice i'm like <laughs> there's a Vixen notices in star wars like i guess they would pay their taxes and, and kick them out that's so i but don't know cool. why well i'm totally that's, I so like funny. It, that's a bad example but the yeah. world building of it yeah, yeah <laughs> dude that's things together i'm so glad together. you shared that oh my god that's so funny um looks <laughs> yeah but um it's one of my favorite things about this conversation see okay here's another thing that i love so fucking much about the conversation because i think there's one of these things okay Here's a God's. I'm so glad we got talked about Godzilla because it is such an <laughs> opposite. Yeah, but it's like the epitome. It's the epitome of all of the problems that like that 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 people. Okay, 
I'll just I'll just make my comparison and then and people will know what I'm talking about. Because the problem with something like Godzilla isn't this it's like that movie is obviously shallow, right? That's the yeah, biggest problem. Right. It's shallow. Yeah. But the problem why it's shallow is because they pack too much shit in there. It's yeah, not because sure. there's not enough yeah, shit, right, because right. they're spreading themselves way too thin. It's like yeah. there's like a gazillion characters, human characters, and king I, of monsters. Like, like I don't Godzilla. remember. Any I don't of think them. Even Godzilla is the best example. I think like like that's a, another great Batman, example. That's yeah, like, that's a great example. Like Justice League or Batman, or something like that. You know, something yeah, but like, but know. like again, that's it's we see this again and again where yeah. like these this shit is overpacked with right. information, they're, useless they're information. There are different kinds of movies that they're trying to make here, but yeah, it's but, a great idea, you know. But like the thing about it that is so great about the conversation that's so poignant in the way of story about why the storytelling is so effective is how little they chose to focus on like again like a, 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 a like those movies aren't necessarily the greatest example because those they're more focused on like this breath kind yeah, of experience yeah, and this right. is a depth experience yeah, yeah, for yeah, yeah, sure yeah, yeah. but yeah. still what this is about is it's like it's about harry Cole's psychology and it's about the information he's trying to pick apart from this one conversation right. yeah right and i love how much mileage he get that Francis Ford Coppola pulls out of right. this. It's so awesome yeah. to me because it's like th this whole movie, he's returning back to that beginning scene all the right. way to the yeah. goddamn right. ending of right. the film. Yeah, like it's right. such a gut punch when we get that ending. Well, that's what I love film. about that's like my favorite thing about this movie. Like the conversation is such a great um title for this movie and the great, I know I know like, it's the best like, title ever because this one conversation is looming over him right it's yeah this obsession of finding out which leads him to do things that are kind of immoral right that yeah which leads him to basically I mean break in like like break into a fucking hotel room basically yeah at the very end of the movie yeah, yeah. The very end so we lead him to uh, this whole conversation is the basis of the film. It's the basis of uh, his downfall or his his descent of the extreme paradise. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. And, I think, but it's so satisfying when you finally. It's not also like sometimes we, we just do this, like hiding information from the audience and kind of revealing certain parts of the movie. Uh, plot or something as the film goes on. Sometimes yeah. it ends up and it's not very satisfying. Yes, Sometimes, yes, yes. But this yes. is very satisfying. It's, yes. It's because you don't expect like a murder to fucking happen in this movie, you know? And when not it does, all. it's shocking. It's disturbing and it's shocking. The way that it's presented is straight up like scary, you know? Yeah. Because this whole movie is very subtle and very. Um, kind of calm, you know, yeah, calm, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. tension, it's kind of brewing, and then when this ending happens, it's like this release of the uh, tension and the way that the film sound design, and yeah. like, it's very creepy and very, like, ominous, the ending is very, very uh, nerve-wracking, yeah. very scary. I think um, I want to talk. I think we should dive into the ending scene before we do that. I want to just sure. quickly touch upon how weird I found the party scene to be, because especially this time when I watched it, yeah. uh, I thought it was so interesting. First of all, I didn't realize how important that scene was. Uh, which, yeah, at his, uh, when he's the yeah back. His, his, yeah, his, um, it's it's so office. so Harry Call goes to a convention center for surveillance people, and while he's there, he meets a couple other people, and they all know Harry Call because he's famous, and they end up a couple other buddies that established from the film gather together a couple of friends and a couple of girls, and they all go back to Harry Call's studio right. um, to to drink. And at the studio, one of the guy who is a real asshole is starting to yeah. pressure Harry Call about this one job we did and we and learned that do, during this, yeah. yeah and we learned that during this one job it went really bad and a bunch of people died and here right. and this is the trauma that harry calls yeah, had brewing exactly. and it's sort of yeah. the reason why he's so obsessed with this conversation right. yeah. but one of the things i found so it, it, so that's kind of the story significance and there's a lot of layers 
to how important that scene is. It also plays into yeah. like his loneliness and his paranoia right. Right. about like, like not trusting people and this right. sort of making him trust people a little bit more, but then he regrets it when he's portrayed by the end of the scene. Right. But the specific thing I find so interesting about this is that all of these people are 42 year olds. Yeah. How often do you see this weird frat party on, yeah. on Hollywood cinema where it's 42 year olds? Sure. Isn't that fucking weird? That yeah. seems so weird to me. <laughs> Pretty weird. I think like it's also this is a, this is the seventies. Yeah. Seventies was a different time. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, I mean, like, I think that like, would it's also never like, I wouldn't call it like a party. Like I would call it just like friends kind of just getting drunk yeah. and stuff. But but like but like, dude, it's so it was so strange to me that the like they, they were interact and stuff was very bizarre because it's like it's played. I think it's really effective because it adds a sort of like this surreal creepiness that this yeah, like this yeah, this movie yeah. kind of has. Um, because like he goes out and he walks out. It feels like I was watching Twin Peaks when he's going and talking to this girl in oh, like, yeah, this parking yeah, lot yeah, type of yeah, thing. And yeah. then like his friends come out on the moped and drive around. And it's like, dude, these guys are balding 40 year olds. Right. This is so weird. Well, they're also what I love about that too is like they're all private investigators. Yeah. You know, they're they're <laughs> that, that's a fucking weirdo fucking job. You know, yeah. they, they are uh, they're kind of they're they're independent weird loner dudes. And yeah, like that's why. Like and so it makes sense that they do these kind of weird. Yeah, kind of like not on a chain. You know, they're loose. Yeah, you know, yeah, they're yeah. Fucking, you know, and it makes sense because they have no they absolutely. Have no boss, you know, yeah. And, you know, think about that. Or you just you're like fifty and you just. Yeah, kind of no, can be unhinged. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. So, yeah, it is weird. It is definitely yeah. weird in that regard, for sure. But it, I think it's, yeah, I, I just wanted to, it just struck me about how particularly strange that seemed yeah. in this modern, this modern context to right. me, because I think you're right. And it makes sense in the context of the film. It's not like it doesn't work or anything. No, it's no, a fantastic no, no. scene. Yeah. Um, which is it makes me so uncomfortable to watch yeah, it, but it's so fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I also like um, like that whole. I mean, it gets intense because like the questioning of Harry. Yes. And, and you know, you get a lot of like because we don't know either. We want to know. That's the other thing is like yeah. we want to know about yeah uh, what is making Harry kind of this paranoid kind of the way he is. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um. And yeah, when you find that out, you know, it's it it adds so much to the movie, man. You know? Which which you're already processing so much, so you feel right. like you're almost overloaded at that right. point. And um, and so I guess I also like wanted to say too is like at the beginning of the episode or the discussion I kinda of talk about how like how relevant this movie is, even like yeah. to this yeah, right. day. And, like, the first thing I always say is, like, the convention where, you know, it disturbs me because, like, there's, like, these devices that they, I don't know if they're real or I don't know if, like, that they're talking about. This is 1974. This movie yeah. Came out. Yeah. And, like, one of them is, like, just to turn the phone, any phone into just like, a recording device. Yeah. Um, by just playing a harmonica code uh, that, comes back brilliantly at the end of the movie. Yeah. Um, but um that's fucking creepy, man. I you know, you watch that, you know, like I said before, you're creeped out. You watch that in two thousand twenty, you are shitting your pants, you know, because you're like you look at your iPhone you, differently. R- yeah. I mean, you look at your iPhone differently, you look at things differently. I'm like, I'm lucky that I'm not a drug dealer or <laughs> or like, not yet or, you know, uh, whatever I'm going to be that yeah. I need to be surveillance or yeah. I care if I'm being surveillance. <laughs> and I don't have this par- paranoia. I don't really have that. But this movie kind of makes you um, feel that way. You know, there's, yeah. there's, a, there's like, I forget what happened, but like, I was looking at something and like, after I watched it last night, like I looked at my phone and like, like there was an ad for the conversation on Instagram, the buy it on Blu ray. So, you know, it, it, it fucking scares the shit out of you because you're not, you know, I didn't say anything. I didn't, you know, I didn't 
talk I didn't tell my friends. Right. And, you know, it's listening to you. Your iPhone right. is listening to you. And, right. You know, even like in the seventies, this movie was scary. Now it's like, you know, they, people can have this crazy. Uh, they have so many resources to spy on, on you if they if they want to. Yeah. And, um, and so that, this movie is just so much more relevant today than it ever yeah. was, and it will always be relevant because of the subject matter. Yeah. Um, and because even if the technology is dated or, or whatever, yeah, the idea of, like, even just the technology of recording a conversation, like, you never would have thought that you could possibly need to do that. You know, like, I never, when I first saw this movie, I didn't even think about the possibility of, like, this what one of my favorite scenes of the movie is in that party scene where they're talking about how they recorded that conversation where they had like different like how they would do it where they had yeah. different you know it's fucking scary man because it's you think about like it's not that it's it's hard but it's it's possible that your every move of every conversation could be recorded if somebody wanted to and I know you know, I know. and so like and that's what kind of leads Harry to go down this at the very end, which is fucking iconic yeah. and shit and amazing. Yeah, and this kind of, I think yeah. that this this is kind of a great segue to sort of talk about like the the ending part of this movie and also um, bring in this other aspect that I really wanted to talk about because I was so struck that I've seen this movie a couple times too, but it was only this last viewing that I recognized how great of a character Harrison Ford's character was. Yeah, and I didn't right. quite get how yeah. important he was to the plot yeah. either because right. Harrison Ford plays the main antagonist. Yeah, and yeah. not only does he the play guy the main who Harry, yeah, yeah. Well, he plays the assistant of the guy who oh, hires yeah, right. yeah, him. Right, right. Um, but he and Harrison Ford is honestly kind of the personification of this sort of dubious surveillance control thing that you're expressing. Yeah. He's right. kind of like the human form of what we're all scared of. The yeah. all-powerful guy who knows everything that you're doing and has yeah. full control and is right. the, the control of it. Because like the sort of w this descent that you're talking about with Harry is like he's trying to get control and be in control of his surroundings, be in control of like his sex life, all of this shit. You know, right. trying to get that. And he just realizes more and more how little he actually has, how little yeah. autonomy and freedom he actually I has. I know. I know. And, and, and it's like, and it's, and I think one of the reasons why this movie is so timeless is in addition to the subject matter just being really interesting and really relevant, the, Francis Ford Coppola just nails the psychology of how yeah, a human right. would react right. to being in yeah. this situation. Right. It's like, I don't care how good of a person, how good of a mood you are in. Like, you know, maybe you'd be a little bit more, whatever. You'd be different. Yeah. But like, if you were put in this situation, that's what it would be like, yeah, dude. Right. That is exactly yeah. what yeah. it would be like. Right. Um. So I, I, and I, I loved... I, I just love sort of as we're when we get into this end phase of it, like man, where should we where should we start from with this? So, so like, I mean, I guess like we should start with like he basically like gets so part of the conversation is that these two, uh, the couple is talking about this apartment, this uh, this hotel. We yeah, seven seven at, three at Saturday seven seven three, and he is so. Um, and he, he also discovers that there's a line in the conversation that he'd kill us if uh, he had the chance. Which he's which the, the he is his employer. Yeah. Who he's, is, is what he's talking is about. deeply disturbing to Harry. And so he, because of, of this past experience, so he is, wants to save, he is led to believe that um, one of the couple, like, die or get killed or, yeah. or somebody is going to die. So he uh, decides to take matters in his own hands and goes to the hotel and sets yeah. up the surveillance thing and hears an yeah. argument. Well, this is like all even sorry to interrupt you, but like yeah. before all of this, there's been like this period of time where he withheld the tapes being the, turning them in and stuff. So there's yeah. kind of this conflict where you know, the assistant is really pressuring him to give him the tape. Yeah. He won't give it until he gets right. it into the real person. Yeah. And it's only until he fails withholding the tapes 
yeah. and they basically take them from him. They, they steal it from him that he goes and collects his money yeah. and realizes yeah. that there's nothing he can do. Like they've heard the tapes yeah, and right. then he, he goes to what you were right. just about to explain. Right. Yeah. That's the important Intense. It, yeah. That's the intense. Um, yeah. So he, he basically overhears this argument and something happens and he sees like, and the moment that is very, like, scary and disturbing is that, because there's moments where you and your paranoia are thinking that, oh, maybe this will happen, you know, maybe this will, and he's expecting, you know, he pro- in that moment, he, he, he hopes that there isn't somebody getting killed, or hopes that yeah. somebody isn't going to get hurt, but there's, there's a sense in Harry that it probably isn't going to be true, I'm just kind of crazy but when he actually does see the blood the bloody hand go on the fucking window yeah. and that burst of that stab of strings and yeah weird the soundtrack come in sound, you know yeah and he just basically collapses on the bed and the sound comes out you know you know it's it, it turns out to be true you know it's one of those moments that when you are doing a mystery or something and you hope that it isn't true but it is true, and yeah. it's just absolutely the sense of, like, what have I done, and I didn't prevent this from happening, you know? Yeah, and it also, also, it's sort of, it again, it's all it's the just, same... The same traumatic thing that happened to him. Yes. The, 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 the previous event that we and never it, see. But. We're all working with the same thematic material that he's been struggling with the whole movie in this yeah. final scene, and right. I think one of the coolest things about this, too... <laughs> it's not about, a happy ending. No, it's not uh, at all. But yeah. like, and also the thing that we're struggling, two factors that I'm thinking is so interesting about this ending is sort of like the, how we, the, miscommunication, essentially, how like information yeah. can be so distorted through our own perceptions where it's like Harry was close, but by the end of the movie, we realized he was not spot on, which it was pretty, a pretty dramatic mistake that he right. made his misinterpretation of what happened. And then the other thing that is really interesting is also uh, which is tied to that is like his own how trusted can his own mind be which one of my favorite th- moments of this movie is when he breaks in to 773 and he's looking at this hotel room and there's no evidence of the murder yeah, right that's another thing too yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I, I think that that that's like such a great moment that might be my yeah. favorite moment in the whole damn movie it's yeah crazy. I mean, there's like there's also cool there's like some weird surreal moments like what you're yeah. talking about is like that's a weird surreal moment also know? the dream sequence too but dream like sequence. yeah right it's <laughs> that was a weird, weird scene bizarre cool i love um, that scene but yeah, so when he flushes the toilet, the fu- all the blood the comes blood up. Bubbles and... out. That is just horror shit. That is just straight up like exorcist shit. Which like yeah. I was, I texted you that while last night. I texted you, it's like, yeah, Man, that... this movie's directed like a horror I, movie. I remember that scene when I first saw this movie. I was like, what the fuck? Like that's like the moment where I was like, oh, this movie's fucking badass because it basically yeah. just turns into a fucking horror what? movie. <laughs> like, yeah fucking crazy and also kind of going backwards in the film pretty dramatically but i was also thinking about the first scene when he hands the assistant the money and he 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 turns it away and takes the tapes like when he gets on the elevator you see the assistant in the hallway holding up the money and i was thinking about this like dude i know this isn't like a horror context but that's like that's creepy as fuck (laughs) oh yeah it was totally intentional too yeah it was it's uh yeah that's a creepy moment too yeah totally But yeah. um, I think it's I think, all leads to the surveillance aspect too. Yeah, everyone, somebody is always watching you. you know? Yeah, and let's let's sort of talk about this massive spoiler because I think actually explaining <laughs> what this move happens in the end is actually good because I think that's another thing that's kind of why people don't like this that much is that you could watch it and not really understand what happened. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, so right. I think w- what happens at the end of this movie, what Harry discovers is that he was actually wrong. He thought that what yeah. was going to happen is that his client, who was this big director, was going to k- kill one of the couples, which it re- is revealed. And when he turns in the tapes, finally, that the younger girl is this older director's wife, who right. it seems from the tapes is having an affair with this younger man who yeah, works at the company. Why they, that's why they, he got hired in the first place. Yes. Like, 
Oof. And so and so he thinks that because of this affair, the director is then going to kill this woman. Right. But what actually happens is that because Harry, at the end of the movie, he goes, he tries to talk to this director because he's pissed off that he killed this girl right. and he finds the girl alive. And he sees that there's yeah. a headline that says yeah. the executive died in a crash. Right. It turns out that what actually happened is that um, these two people were actually killed the director and it was all set yeah, up by the yeah, assistant right. who was working with yeah, this to get them yeah. set up in this place right. so and it was all we'll, like we'll call, yeah right. to become the head and it right. was a money ploy right. and it was a love triangle thing right. and 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 harry call which is such a great moment it's like i can't i still don't know what that he could be he realizes it is so Awesome. Because he, it's like, do you see f- that line? You know, he'd kill us if we had the chance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So awesome, Which also is great. It's be- so brilliant because it, it, yes. it's all about the context, man. Yeah, the whole context of that conversation, that one line, completely changes. I also, I also love that every time I watch this movie, that last time that you hear him say he'd kill us if he had the chance, I'm sure it's the same thing as the time you heard us through all this other movies. But I swear to God, it sounds, it sounds different. different. Yeah, man, it's fucking badass. It's sick. It's fucking badass. It is yeah. like, it's like, it is. You know, so satisfying. So yeah. we were talking about earlier, it's like when you make something like this, that is kind of you are hiding things in secret, and you're kind of not revealing too much. And when you finally do, and it is that satisfying, and that it's satisfying if you want it to be. But you're yeah. kind of, what you're getting at is like somebody you could that could go over somebody's head. Yes. You know? Um, but you know when you get it, when it clicks, it will blow. It will click. It, yeah. yeah, and it, I, it and I think the thing that's also so brilliant about this movie is that it blows your mind every time you see it yeah, because right. you start this movie and you're just like, dude, it's not going to work for me this time. It's just too <laughs> yeah. slow. I, I know the setup too much. Yeah, right. But every single time you're like, wow, yeah. wow. And so the real the ending ending is when he goes back to his apartment. He he. he you know, he thinks that the event is over. He's playing right. saxophone. Which, honestly, honestly, you could have cut, like, when he found that out. Right, yeah, didn't totally. didn't actually have yeah, to right. have this ending scene, but right. he actually goes on to go ahead and make the greatest ending of ever, any movie ever made. <laughs> yeah, one of them, yeah. For sure, it's pretty cool. So go um, ahead. <laughs> and so he, so he's in, um, he gets a call. No one answers, hello, hangs up, continues to play his sexy Duke Ellington uh, solo or whatever he's <laughs> playing and gets another call you hear the harmonica thing right the code and basically Harrison Ford's character says you know we know you know we're always watching you click and what's so brilliant is that Gene Hackman played this so Brilliantly, because you know, a, a, maybe a lesser actor or maybe a uh, lesser filmmaker would kind of make that moment be loud, make that be like, fuck, you know, rams in around the house. And yeah, the way that this is presented is so eerie and scary. And yeah, you, that's a great point, dude. He that's a great is point. so scared that he shows almost no lack of emotion. And we see this moment where he is just a doll that's in his house and he basically just destroys it destroys all the the um shelving and we cross this all into him his apartment basically being torn to shreds. yeah because he, he progressively gets more and more obsessed with trying to find the bug that he's right. he knows right. that they're watching him somehow right. and he's the best surveillance guy ever so he yeah. has to be able to find it right. so it's like it's so great because it's it's this deconstruction it's finally yeah. like that it's the explosion we've been waiting right. for this whole yeah, movie exactly, right. as his like psyche is destroyed right. exactly, because it's yeah. like it destroys him on the fact that he's not a good surveillance he, he's not a capable yeah, surveillance man right. he's not a good Christian you know you know yeah, he right. has to destroy the virgin man yeah, to, try right, to find right, this right. Uh, it's like on so many level, yeah, levels it's a literal right. destruction of his environment yeah, that's, another thing we talk about. that's like one of my favorite things too is that when he took his sins when he goes yeah. And, oh yeah the confession the confession because scene. that's also a really cool moment because like you get the sense i always think about that like, that is one of the weirdest things it's not like catholicism that people do that or christianity one of the uh-huh. two 
I'm not. I'm not um, sure. I'm not a good. Source. I don't really know. Um, and, but you know, I always talk about that was one of the weirdest things because we talked about religion like, like a couple episodes ago. Yeah. If you really break down what's happening, who? Why would you fucking? You're telling this random guy like your deepest darkest secrets. At the end of the day, that guy is just some fucking random guy. Yeah. But right. <laughs> about that guy. How much shit that he knows about everybody in the fucking town. That's so funny. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Whoever is because it's such a dark and weird mindset to be like, I want to be the guy to hear every darkest secret. Yeah. Because he knows all these people. It's not like anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's it, it's but weird the because that, but the thing about that because the way that Coppola suits that new scene. Yeah. Is super eerie because the way yeah. that he shoots that is like his hair is in focus and then he becomes less and less less in focus and we just see this weird sil- silhouette of this man um, and like it's just a very eerie way of which is it. also which which it's like it's creepy but it also you know and it also adds to this surveillance theme yeah, because it's right. like who was right. that guy really yeah, right exactly who who was that. Was it Harrison Ford? You know, who knows? Like, right, you don't know. You know, and, it could have just been a clergyman. A great, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, so just been a guy, could have been just a nice guy. Yeah, you know, uh, who went to at the end of the day and told his whole family that story. But, yeah. um, <laughs> and <laughs> but yeah, you're so right. Like I didn't even think about that. Yeah, he's destroying his. You know, he's destroying the Virgin Mary. Like not even worrying about his religion at that point and yeah his i mean his apartment and we do like it's in shreds i mean it is, it like is no wallpaper shreds. no floor everything nothing no clothes anywhere like no bed like he has like nothing yeah nothing and he's just sitting there playing the sax sweaty man playing yeah. the sax and this amazing last shot and the credits roll as he's playing as he's playing, the credits are rolling throughout that. Um, and it's just this eerie, lonely, lonely shot because you know that he is most likely going to be paranoid for almost the rest of his life or yeah. for God knows how long and has nowhere to go, you know, nowhere to, you know. Burned all of his connections he's yeah, ever right. had. Yeah. And so uh, it's not the happiest ending. But it's yeah. I kind of see this ending as such a, a like a a cautionary tale of yeah. of, of surveillance. <laughs> like yeah. um, that's what makes this thing so brilliant because yeah. it, without that scene, I don't think you would get this uh, amazing other layer of Yes, I um, agree. But it would be a great it would still be a great thriller if it ended with, you know, that the reveal of, you know, the the, the the conversation yeah the conversation is but this extra scene yeah so important to the the rest of the film and yeah. i feel i feel like if that's you, what makes it one of the best endings of all time agree like how it adds so much like the, this movie you, you, when you leave the theater you don't maybe think about the conversation you think about Harry calls for Harry. Ex- exactly. Ex- yeah. And that's that's basically, I had two yeah. things about that. And the first thing was to say that, where it's like the ending of the conversation is sort of the ending of the plot, but the, the ending ending is sort yeah. of the ending of Harry's sort of high character arc. Right. Um, and the other thing I love about this is that in writing, I think, I don't know if you've heard this before, but in writing, I was told again and again that, that what makes a good conclusion is something that wraps up all the ideas of what you have written before, yeah, yeah, but also yeah. introduces something new, right? right it's a new right, perspective or something. Right, yeah. I think this film has one of the craziest, like, new perspectives on this yeah, film, right, which yeah. may, doesn't really, you don't really realize until that final shot for me. Because for me, it all clicks when I made the connection, which is like, holy shit, that final shot is a fucking security camera shot. Right. And then I right. realized yeah, that, like, it has. Right. It has like this meta. I had this meta yeah. thought where I like to think about it. It's like, dude, we're the bug. The camera is the bug watching right. Harry call yeah, right. the whole right. time, which right. is why, which adds into like why it feels like such a fucking surveillance movie. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah, it's like right. that first zooming, zooming in shot. It's like that's not. Yeah. They weren't. It wasn't Harry calls people who were zooming in on that shot. 
it yeah. was the surveillance people zooming right. out. And it's like, and again, yeah. what I love about that is that that's not necessarily like literally what's happening. That's not the actual yeah, of course I'm trying not. to ask but, that. Yeah, right. But it's this, it's sort of this surrealist new meta yeah. view that you have to this film that yeah. just makes it so much more impactful to yeah. me and yeah. so much more and just gives it more layers to chew on, which I just find I just love that. You know, yeah. I love it where there's just more depth and stuff to it um more just more things to think about new just new aspects to this fucking beast of a film it's 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 it's, it, it's probably it's probably my favorite ending personal personally my favorite cinematic ending that i have yeah, seen yeah i'd have to think about it but it's definitely like up there for sure it's i always I, I, I would always say it might not be Empire number one every good. day which one Empire strikes back is pretty good you know that one's not bad either <laughs> <laughs> It's definitely it's like on the film. <laughs> if I was making a top ten, this one would always be. Oh yeah, for like, sure. Always, always, yeah, absolutely, always. Yeah, for sure. uh, remember, like I think part of that is what we just described with how amazing it is, but also like when I first saw this, it was such a like gut punch of like yeah. that like you know I'll never forget it. You know, the first time I saw it. So yeah. Um, and I, I would think too that even if you don't understand this film, which is understandable, we've we've explained throughout this movie why it's very understandable why you don't really get this, why you might yeah. not get this film. Right. I think you would still feel this ending. I would guess. I, I mean, would I think, hope but that. I, mean, I hope so. I mean, yeah. when I first saw this movie, I didn't necessarily understand it, but I still fucking felt it. Yeah, you know? yeah I yeah, really did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally. It took me a long time to sort of get what the fuck is going on. It's confusing. So yeah, I mean, this is definitely my favorite Coppola movie, for I sure. So like, I haven't seen all his movies, uh, yeah. but I've seen the ones that are iconic. Yeah. And it's funny because this is the one that maybe is lesser known, but it's yeah. my favorite Coppola movie. I mean, you I know, love Godfather, I love Godfather Part 2. Yeah. Apocalypse Now is maybe the greatest war movie ever. But this is... It's so different than those other movies, and so much more intimate and feels so much more of like a like he needed to tell this story almost yeah like he was feeling these like feelings of surveillance and creep out and was like had to make this movie or something yeah you know? it, it almost feels like kind of like a decathecting kind of thing of his own like maybe because the i think i know for a fact that the first godfather was miserable to make and stuff yeah, and like him. can you just imagine like after having this crazy career like Coppola, the amount of like stress on a person that like it well. makes sense that like a movie like this that he would kind of explode with a movie like this totally, and, yeah. and and in this kind of way. Well, so also, I, I agree. Now is like maybe the most famous horror story of filmmaking of all time. Yeah, he said he had <laughs> rough he had rough shootings because he was doing crazy things. He was doing crazy, crazy things, things that people yeah. right. still haven't quite you know no. nothing compares to Coppola. You know yeah. he's done his he is historic. He is yeah. absolutely historic. I'm glad I told you that I went. I I visited his like like winery. Like his oh winery. really? Yeah, like I was when I was young. I think we were in like Florida. Somewhere, I can't remember where it is, but I like saw, like, I like went to his vineyard, like, yeah, and stuff. And like, in there, like, he has like uh, props from like his. Oh, vineyard. cool. I don't remember if there's anything from the conversation because at the time I didn't know what the conversation was, but yeah, they had like a bunch of like Godfather sitting there. It was like really cool. That sounds anyway, dope. That's weird. That sounds sweet. Yeah, um, go yeah, there yeah, if you're interested. We, yeah, I really, I can't remember what it's called, but uh, it's, it's really cool. Uh, anyway, I think we, we are done talking. We did about. it. We did it. We talked about uh, that for a long time. Um, I think we did. I feel good. Amazing film. Yeah, amazing. 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 I think we can. This is obviously. A hood classic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, it's definitely approved. Uh, absolutely love this movie. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Now it's my turn to pick a movie. Yes, what is, it, what is it gonna be? Um, to I think that we should watch. I've been wanting to watch this movie for years because I've heard okay. a lot about it, and it's by a filmmaker that I never, I know is very iconic, but I've never seen any of his movies. 
Okay. Uh, and this is a movie called Naked. Um, that came out what? in the nineties. Okay. And it was directed by a famous British filmmaker named Mike Lee. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I think we should watch Naked. So I have, I have n- no idea what this film. is. So there is a British film, very iconic British film from oh. the nineties. All right. Uh, and I, I've had a couple friends recommend this movie to me. And so um, I am excited to watch it. So I think we're going to do that next week. Um, and then we got to do... Wait, uh, so is this, is this Naked, the 2017 romance no, 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 comedy? No, 1993. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. No, okay. not that piece of shit. I don't, <laughs> you know, what if I, I watch that? <laughs> That's not yeah. Netflix movie, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Marlon yeah. Wayans. Yeah, that's the I one. Know exactly <laughs> what that is. No, not that. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. It stars David Flewellis, who is most famously Doctor Lupin in the hit, um, Harry Potter movies. Oh, gotcha. And he was recently in. I'm thinking of ending things. He played the dad. Oh my god, yeah. he was so good. Yeah, as that he, character, he's a great character actor. So um, I'm excited. We're gonna do that next. Yeah, week. I'm excited too. I've never heard about this film. And then. Uh, the next maybe week we're gonna do probably our twilight our, which is which, we i'm into that install the, the twilight in our twilight we're, uh journey which if you weren't here for the eclipse uh we had a good time with that so that was Very a couple episodes time. back so yeah. uh recommend listening to that we'll and zap back for that too which is this is I think this is the first time we'll hear about this. So Zach, if you're listening to us, let us know if this works for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll text you too. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll hear that. <laughs> yeah. But we're we're not gonna we're not we're not watching them in order. We're, this is yeah. gonna be a series that we're hoping to continue with our friend Zach, and we're trying to watch all five Twilight films completely right. out of order. So right. who knows which one's we're gonna probably be next? Gonna do it once a month. Yeah. So we're good we st- we, the next one. Three is down. We have one, two, <laughs> four, and five left. Yes. What's yes. gonna be next? No we're idea. Gonna get it go. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do yeah. it. One way or another. All um, right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you want to follow us, follow us on Instagram. You know, we get these amazing comments that Jesse does for every episode. It's fucking badass. Thank you. And we posted out all the episodes. Uh we're hopefully gonna post more goofs on there. I need to post more stories. Um, and yeah, if you tell your on Instagram, Twitter, follow, tell your mom and dad, and beaver, and beavers, sister, beavers, uh, beavers your, and sisters, beavers, <laughs> brothers, <laughs> squirrels, uh, uh, amphibians, uh, and, and amphibians, also have, uh, the pumpkins, peacocks, the pumpkins, Be sure. pumpkins, pumpkins, and peacocks, and squaw. Tell your pumpkins. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody, thank you guys so much for listening. Love you. Happy birthday, Jesse. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.